Allô Bonjour, Jamel. Vas-y, vas-y. Bonjour, ma. bonjour, monsieur le maire. Oui, c'est toujours moi. Et... C'est bon, le son est bon Oui, donc l'événement va commencer dans une minute. Et donc votre intervention, comme je vous l'ai dit, euh, du, du maire de, 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 du Grand Bassam, ça va être à 13h25. Oui, mais est-ce que tu m'entends, le son oui, le son là. Oui, euh, euh... on vous entend, on vous entend. C'est quoi, ça bon Oui, on va, on, va, on va faire comme ça. Très bien. Ok, ok. Donc le maire s'installe et puis ici en même temps euh, la conférence. Tout à fait. Ok. Urban heritage is all around us. Every city, town, and settlement contains places that local residents value, which have been handed down over time, whether centuries or just a few decades. Heritage is not just monuments. A city is not a monument. The built environment, its natural setting, and cultural practices of the local communities are together what makes cities and settlements across the world unique and diverse. Historic cities have evolved over time. They are repositories of collective knowledge and identity whose value is not in its grand monuments alone but in its urban fabric. Historic places consist of many things, the natural setting of a town, its skyline, streets, ordinary houses, unique methods of using local stone or brick, specialized carpentry or ironwork, waterfronts, gardens, plazas, and public spaces, markets and vendors, processions and celebrations, traditional music, dance, and crafts, all come together in historic places. These different layers of the urban landscape are knit closely together, making historic places vibrant, livable, and people-centered. The identity of historic urban areas, their spirit of place, and these different layers of the urban landscape must be protected as a whole. Every element and layer is important, and so are its connections to the others. But cities grow and change. How should everyday settlements across the world preserve their urban heritage as they develop? Should historic places preserve every ordinary house and square while also building roads and shopping centers? This seems like a dilemma where one must choose between conflicting demands. On the one hand cities, even historic ones, must develop, grow, and change. On the other hand, urban heritage must be preserved for its uniqueness and identity. The Hull approach is meant for plans and policies made with heritage. Urban heritage makes cities more resilient, safe, inclusive, sustainable.
Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, wherever you are in the world. I'm Jyoti Hosagraha, Deputy Director of the World Heritage Center, and a very warm welcome to all of you. Thank you very much for joining us today for this very special occasion, the 10th anniversary of the whole recommendation. I would now like to invite our Assistant Director General for Culture, Mr. Ernesto Ottone, uh, to, uh, to make some welcome uh, remarks and to launch uh, the, uh, the HUL call for action. Mr. Ottone, please. Uh, good morning. Uh -huh. So, dear majors from around the world, dear esteemed panelists, experts, and valued partners, ladies and gentlemen, connecting from towns and cities around the world, it is with great pleasure that I welcome you to the 10th anniversary celebration of the 2011 UNESCO recommendation on the historic urban landscape and the launch of the Huel Call for Action. Today, more than half of humanity lives in urban areas, and the number is projected to rise to nearly 70% by 2050. In recent years, particularly in the global south, many towns have transformed into cities and metropolis. Close to 4,000 new metropolitan areas emerged between 75 and 2015, now accounting for one third of all metropolitan cities. We may say that the 21st century is the century of cities. For decades, UNESCO has upheld the importance of cities as rich repositories of history, heritage, and identity accumulated over centuries. Recognized for their outstanding universal value, not only to the residents, but all, to all uh, of humankind, historic cities makes up uh, one third of the world heritage properties. We also continue to encourage contemporary uh, contemporary urban creativity. Since its launch in 2004, over 245 cities have joined UNESCO's Creative Cities Network, a city of crafts and folk arts, media arts, film, design, gastronomy, literature, or music. In 2011, we adopted the Historic and Urban Landscape Recommendation, or commonly known as the HUL. Landscape is a holistic understanding of an area, including tangible and intangible elements, visible and hidden infrastructures, natural and artificial features, and also indoor and outdoor human activities. From monuments to festivals and rituals, markets to design and architecture, culture and creativity, exist in every aspect of urban landscape. This comprehensive and inclusive approach allow us to preserve the quality of human environment and what makes each city unique. Huel proposed a new perspective on cities, one in which social economic development and heritage conservation are not conflicting interests but allies to realize sustainable urban development. It expands the notion of urban conservation from the physical safeguarding of monuments and historical areas to a complex and inclusive process that allows cities to maintain and expand their sense of place and identity without impeding the delivery of essential services. The human approach is shaped by inputs expertise and involvement from a large group of stakeholders, including local and national government, public and private sector, civil society, urban planners, conservationists, and of course, the inhabitants of the city. Dear friends, sustainable urban development is a balancing act. Population growth, migration, industrialization, and globalization have prompt rapid reconstructions and development, often at odds with the existing social and cultural fabric of communities. The pandemic has revealed the importance of urban planning and management, as cities account for over 90% of the COVID-19 cases, as noted in the UN policy brief on COVID-19 and cities. Urban access have the responsibility to protect their residents' well-being, 
according to the UN, cities contribute as much as 70% of the world's greenhouse gas emissions. Also, the, they occupy just 2% of the land area. During a meeting with leading uh, C40 uh, city climate leadership group majors, the UN Secretary General stressed that cities need to work with national decision makers to accelerate climate action and invest in sustainable livelihoods and green transport systems. In the face of pressing challenges, culture and heritage are often left behind with, within the urban development agenda. When heritage is protected, the focus has typically been on monuments and iconic sites, leaving more subtle aspects of historic areas, such as houses and public spaces, vulnerable to loss or destruction. As a result, local communities can find themselves disconnected from the heritage as well as the knowledge and practices they embody. Dear friends, culture and heritage should not be considered obstacles for city planning, but engines for sustainable urban futures. Huel approach can enrich the economic and social life of inhabitants through sustainable tourism, invigoration of local commercial activities, attraction of high-end service sectors, high land and property values, support for traditional occupations and local buildings materials, and enhanced community engagement, shared identity, and social cohesion. Urban planning, which integrates the HUL recommendation, can also contribute to the 2030 Agenda for Sustainable Development by enabling preservation of the quality of human environment and activities, productive and sustainable use of urban spaces, promotion of diversity and inclusion, and generation of decent and inclusive jobs opportunities, to name only a few. Cities have always have, uh, had boundless capacities to innovate, reinvent, and bounce back from crisis. During the two technical meetings that precede this event, we heard from 20 cities from around the world, diverse yet united, united in their commitment to innovation and sustainable urban futures. In Valparaiso, Chile rehabilitation of buildings within historical center has resulted in the revival of community life and commercial activities. In San Luis Island in Senegal, where many of heritage buildings were in a precarious state, a multi-billion dollar project has been undertaken with a focus on livability, revitalization of local and art sector, and local entrepreneurship. Today, we are launching the UNESCO Cult Call for Action to further unlock the potential of culture uh, for urban development. I call on all majors and leaders for all of all cities and settlements around the world to join the call through three concrete actions. First, to raise awareness among local and national actors about the HUL approach and encouraging its implementation. Second, promote a local consultation process to empower stakeholders, including NGOs, public and private stakeholders, to support a HUL, a HUL driven approach to urban development. And finally, to develop local heritage management strategies based on the HUL approach and participating in UNESCO's network and exchanging on good practices. This commitment is just the beginning. We will be uh, following up on the implementation and the progress made through regular follow-ups. So a breakthrough made by one city is an inspiration for all others. Last but not least, I would like to thank the majors and cities leaders present here today I, as well as leading expert and representative of international organization for joining us and committing to HULF Call for Action. I look forward to working with all of you going forward on this important initiative. Thank you so much. Jody, you have the floor. Thank you. Thank you very much, ADG, for those very inspiring words and for launching the HUL Call for Action. Um, I want very quickly now to turn to a, a very important message we have from the Minister for Education and Culture of the uh, Republic of Indonesia, uh, Mr. Nadim uh, Anwar Makarim. 
Uh, I will uh, give my uh, uh, my my talk. Uh, maybe I should just give my talk, and then uh, we can have his uh, message uh, right after that, because I think that's how it's already set up. Um, all right, so we can start with my slides. Um, thank you. Uh, the 2011 um, recommendation on the historic urban landscape, or the whole recommendation, next please, calls on member states to integrate conservation and management of cultural heritage in cities and settlements with policies and practices for sustainable urban development. It applies to all historic cities, not only World Heritage Sites. It advocates a landscape approach, as ADG just told us, for approaching uh, a, a landscape approach for identifying, conserving, and managing historic areas within their broader context, considering the interrelationships between the physical forms, natural features, and social and cultural values. The HUL recommendation emphasizes an approach that recognizes heritage as an intricate part of its larger setting and its geographical, historical, social, and cultural context. It advocates looking at historic uh, urban areas as composed of layers and emphasizes the relationships between the built heritage, natural environment, and local communities. These layers include the natural and cultural, tangible and intangible, universal and local heritage values present in any city. These heritage values are key for the overall management and development of the city. Thus, the HUL approach advises the integration of heritage and conservation with uh, urban development plans and processes in order to manage change to protect the heritage values. The 40th General Conference of UNESCO also reaffirmed the importance of the Hull recommendation in the context of the 2030 Agenda for Sustainable Development. The new urban agenda and the African Union Agenda 2063, even as the World Heritage General Assembly adopted the World Heritage Sustainable Development Policy uh, uh, at UNESCO. In uh, 2019, um, the uh, UNESCO carried out the second member state survey on the implementation of the whole recommendation. The report demonstrated, uh, the survey demonstrated the relevance of the whole recommendation as cities and their heritage continue to face complex global challenges and seek sustainability, inclusion, and resilience. The importance of establishing links between national, federal, and local level decision makers at the city and country level emphasize the importance of implementing the whole in UNESCO member states beyond those in the World Heritage City list and recommended reinforcing the implementation of eco-sensitive uh, policies with the 2030 agenda and the new urban agenda. Establishing monitoring mechanisms to support cities in assessing their implementation of whole and collecting and disseminating international good practices and experiences on whole supporting localizing of integration, integration of the whole approach and integrating tools for impact assessments and the use of digital technologies uh, to reach out to youth and underrepresented groups and the local community. They also noted the importance of connecting urban heritage protection in the context of disasters, including those related to climate change. With rising temperatures and accompanying sea level rise, increased, increased risk of climate change related disasters are also on the rise. Over 90% of all urban areas are coastal, putting most cities uh, on earth at risk of flooding and uh, from rising sea levels and powerful storms. Historic cities are particularly at risk because of many, because many of them develop for historical reasons along the coast or along major rivers. Thus, a large number of World Heritage Cities, for instance, or nearly a third of them are along coasts. Climate change is now among the top threats to cultural and natural heritage sites. Um, 
Next, please. Also relevant to mention here is a new collaborative activity we are launching with the Group on Earth Observation, using Earth observation to understand and document <clears throat> the impact of climate change on World Heritage Cities. Building on recent work of UNESCO on urban heritage, I want to recall two significant uh, works that we, we built on. First, the UNESCO carried out the first global survey of culture and heritage for sustainable development that was launched during the UN Habitat, or Habitat 3 conference in Quito in October of 2016 as Culture Urban Future, Global Report on Culture for Sustainable Urban Development, which provides a framework for urban heritage management in line with the whole recommendation that aims to put heritage at the heart of sustainable urban development. The second is the UNESCO World Bank collaborative work on culture in city reconstruction and recovery, as where cities are increasingly bearing the brunt of conflicts, crises, disasters, and uh, themselves are growing in number, magnitude, and complexity. The framework for culture in city reconstruction and recovery, known as the CURE framework, uh, is a culture-based approach to the process of city reconstruction and recovery. In recent years, UNESCO has developed indicators to measure the role and contribution of culture to the 2030 agenda at national and urban levels that was launched as the Culture 2030 Indicators during the Forum of the Ministers of Culture in November of 2019 with more than 120 Ministers of Culture. These indicators are currently being piloted in some historic cities uh, as well as other cities and at the national level. Next, please. In June 2020, the first uh, World Heritage City Lab was organized by the World Heritage Center in the context of recovery and building back better uh, um, in the, in the, during the ongoing pandemic. International experts and practitioners gathered to exchange and debate strategies for how heritage could be integrated into sustainable development and recovery from the impacts of the ongoing pandemic and how cities were coping with the sudden loss of tourism and closures of different types. Learning from case studies and the co-creative co approach to developing strategies, participants uh, together collectively identified five principal pathways for recovery and resilience. First, the people-centered recovery. Second, a green recovery. Third, an equitable economic recovery. A fourth, recovering space and infrastructure. And the fifth, digital powered recovery. Overall, there was a lot of discussion and a lot of co commitment to the idea that uh, what needs to happen on the ground relates to better laws and coordination, um, more integration of heritage and urban planning, uh, including people making heritage for all participation uh, and including small local businesses to make them more sustainable, uh, integrating better with uh, with businesses and, and with digital heritage and learning. Next, please. Um, urban notebooks, uh, I want to just touch on very quickly uh, a way to keep in touch with the work that we are doing, which is developed as a monthly e-newsletter for site managers that includes some examples of innovative practices and is published in English, French, and Spanish. If you're not already receiving this, please do go to our website and subscribe for it, the World Heritage Center website and then the World Heritage Cities web pages. Um, and uh, finally, next please, I want to touch on the uh, Canopy, which is a platform of innovative practices and strategies that further heritage protection for sustainable development, including the implementation of the whole recommendation. Next, please. So with all of this, uh, we really uh, are delighted uh, and we uh, ask you to join the UNESCO Network for Hull and respond to the whole call for action. You can go to the link here to sign up for three actions as outlined by the ADG. Thank you very much. And now uh, we turn to the message of the Minister for Education and Culture of the Republic of Indonesia, Mr. Nadim Anwar Makarim. Excellencies, ladies and gentlemen, 
Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Indonesia is a country with one of the highest rates of urbanization in the world. 56.7% of the population live in cities. The number is projected to increase to 66.6% .6 in the next 15 years. Many cities in Indonesia have fascinating characteristics with elements of cross-cultural interaction, very well-preserved local traditions, and at the same time, a real demand and drive for modernization. On the other hand, we are also dealing with several global issues from climate change, mass tourism, and not to mention the current COVID-19 pandemic. By considering the existing challenges and population growth, we need to find a new perspective and approach to protect our heritage cities. The historic urban landscape approach will help Indonesia preserve the physical and human environment of the country's historical cities with all of its tangible and intangible qualities. By taking into account the existing environment, heritage, diversity, and environmental factors, historic urban landscape will increase the sustainability of city planning, not just to become the next world's most livable city, but a city that has its own unique characteristics, charm, and a long line of tradition that is inherited from one generation to another. This objective would then require a multi-stakeholder collaboration among city development stakeholders, from public to private, and also NGOs. Exchanges on good practices regarding other cities' approaches within the UNESCO network will support a historic urban landscape-driven urban development. This is the purpose of our gathering today. In this regard, the 10th anniversary of HUL is the right moment to start our efforts to develop sustainable cities for future generations. Together, let's build better cities for a better world for all the generations to come. Thank you. Wassalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Thank you very much. That was amazing. And now we move to uh, the uh, message of uh, the mayor of Florence, Mr. Uh, Dario Nardella. Dario Nardella, mayor of the city of Florence. I wanted to thank UNESCO for considering and including Florence in the context of the important celebration of the UNESCO recommendation on the historic urban landscape. The value of the landscape is of high significance for the management and the interpretation of our city. In fact, the city and its territory is frequently associated in a vision that emphasizes the quality of the surrounding environment, which include the hills and the countryside. This is a fundamental link that is also cited as a condition of integrity in the statement of outstanding universal value of the historic center of Florence, included in the UNESCO World Heritage List in 1982. The context in which the historic city is located, besides providing a perfect scenic backdrop, maintains its characteristics and highly contribute to the value of the World Heritage Site. In 2015, with the acknowledgement of the World Heritage Site's buffer zone in the international panorama and also in the local urban and cultural planning, we have undertaken the first step towards the protection and enhancement of the system of city landscape relations. We should start thinking about Florence not only as a mere ensemble of historic buildings, but at a metropolitan level in a continuous dialogue going beyond formal and rigid boundaries. The concepts of stratification, multidisciplinary approach, the relationship between history and contemporary life, the reading of urban spaces in their various connotations, the inclusion of social, economic and cultural practices, attention to cultural and social dynamics and sustainability, all these principles become the building blocks for a new, more systematic vision of the city that is cap capable of accompanying the continuous transformation of urban landscapes. What we should do next is to envision a new approach for the future management and protection of the human environment also in response to the terrible consequences of the pandemic of COVID-19. This is why Florence is and will be constantly committed 
in implementing the UNESCO Historic Urban Landscape Recommendation 2011. Exactly, by considering the urban area as a strictly interviewed and integrated with the context and surrounding landscape. The aim is to promote a sustainable relationship between the urban man-made and the natural landscape in order to foster the balanced development of the economic, social, environmental and cultural dimension of the territory. The metropolitan city of Florence will join the call for action to raise awareness about the recommendation and to accelerate inclusive urban and heritage management through the historic urban landscape approach. Thank you very much to everybody. Thank you, thank you very much. Uh, we will now move to our first panel uh, towards crisis-ready urban heritage. We are delighted to have with us and very honored to have with us uh, the mayor of uh, Bulawayo, Zimbabwe, Mr. Solomon Nguni, the mayor of Grand Bassam, Cote d'Ivoire, Mr. Jean-Louis Muller, the councillor to the mayor of Beirut City, Ms. Matilda Khori, uh, of Beirut, Lebanon, the municipal commissioner of Ahmedabad, India, Mr. Mukesh Kumar. Your Excellencies, welcome. We see that in the ongoing COVID-19 pandemic crisis, there have been uh, many changes that have resulted in the use of urban space and the city's needs have also seen changes. Many cities, for instance, have seen a shift in focus from large scale infrastructure development to people's well-being and livability. What role do you think urban heritage could play in helping to address long crises like climate change and COVID-19 to make cities more resilient and livable. What changes in policies or approach do you see in your city? I would request you to take no more than three minutes each to respond to this. So I will go back and invite you in the same order that we, we just discussed. So Your Excellency, uh, Mr. Solomon Guni, please, sir. Thank you very much. Uh... Uh, Your Excellencies, uh, ladies and gentlemen, good afternoon. Bulawayo is the second largest city in Zimbabwe and is rightly considered as the heritage heartland of the country. The modern Bulawayo town is laid on multi layers of history and heritage. Archaeological studies portrays that the land around the city has been occupied by humanity for more than 15,000 years. The wide distribution of rock art sites in suburbs such as Fortune's Gate and Uside are a testimony to this. While innovation in architecture is important, the preservation and restoration of old buildings and monuments are a reflection of our history, habits, and traditions. The city of Lao has seen the importance of maintaining the historic architectural designs of the city. As a city, it is imperative to tap into the potential of culture arts and the heritage sector to derive economic value. The city has also promoted and supported the creative and cultural industries as evidenced by the various arts festivals held uh, at different times in the year. This includes Intuasa Arts Festival, Kivumba Festival, and Blawayo Arts Festival, which is held from the 2nd and the 5th of June each year. The holding of the arts festival seeks to enable meaningful participation of the people of Blawayo and the nation in cultural life of the city and provide an opportunity for Blawai to showcase its proud heritage, rich diversity, creative nature, resilience, and majesty. It seeks to tell the story of the history of the city, ensuring that, narr that narrative of the city's proud heritage and culture is passed on to next generations. Sustainability calls for stakeholder engagement and partnership. The stakeholder approach is one of the intricate relationships to save the heritage of the city. Loyal City Council works with various partners in the 
ongoing historic tourism program, which also include the urban heritage corridor. The corridor highlights the importance of urban heritage for cultural tourism within the framework of the implementation of UNESCO Rosa Sustainable Cultural Tourism Strategy. The inner city tourism program showcases and packages the city's heritage, historical buildings, cultural spaces, and monuments and land, landmarks. The various urban heritage programs in the city are in line with UNESCO's 2011 recommendations on the historical urban landscape and the Agenda 2021 to Arts, Culture, Heritage, Policy, and Zimbabwe's National Development Strategy 1. All of these are an effort to localize and institutionalize domestication of cultural democracy and cultural responsive urban strategies. Due to, due to the advent of COVID-19 pandemic, international tourism has been badly affected. However, localized cultural tourism is promoted in the city. As we commemorate the 10th anniversary of the historic urban landscape, it is worth noting that heritage was long absent from the mainstream sustainable development debate, despite its cultural importance on societies and its great potential to contribute to social economic uh, environment. As a city, we invite and call upon all cities and towns to join a current call for action to raise Thank awareness you. of the historical urban landscape. I thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. Um, now I invite you, uh, Mr. Mr. Jean-Louis Molo, Your Excellency. Sir, the floor is yours. Merci. Thank you very much for giving me the opportunity to participate in this panel discussion. Grand Bassin is just in the southeast of the country in Côte d'Ivoire. We have an urban spread which has been uh, preserved intact and the Use the universal interest of this is because of the specificity of our architecture, because of the history also that has uh, existed in our country, and also because of the the, the, the landscape and the economic vestiges of our uh, the period of peace in our country, and also on the way in which the uh, traditional structures have existed here in the region. So to come back to the question that was raised uh, for this panel, I think. Sadly, in Grand Bassam, our uh, cultural heritage has indeed been uh, been affected by our urban heritage has been affected by the, the sanitary crisis, the health crisis, which has had an economic impact. It has led to a real drop or uh, the end of our tourist business. And Grand Bassam is really a uh, one of the the top seaside resorts in Côte d'Ivoire. We receive the largest number of tourists at weekends. So we have seen uh, and the need for a new. Uh, uh, plan to relaunch the tourist industry, introducing new measures following on from this health risks. And also, we had to provide aid to the tourist trade local at local level. Hotels and the artisan sector and the restaurant sector have all had to be given help. So the urban landscape has been disturbed by some of the governmental measures that were introduced in response to the health crisis. For example, we were no longer allowed to, 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 to move, uh, to, 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 uh, to travel from one area to another. And this has also had an impact on the, the, the urban landscape. And a lot of our, uh, our treasures, our heritage has actually been, been left to, in, in poor state because of this. So Grand Bassam, as I said, is, is, is a, a large uh, tourist resort. Resort, and we have got to provide services in this urban area to to maintain the, the landscape. And we need a resilience. When a crisis has come along, we have seen that we need to improve the, the, the living standards and the framework uh, in, in the urban area. The video has frozen. Thank you very much, uh, Your Excellency. I would now like to invite uh, the councillor of mayor uh, to the mayor of Beirut, Ms. Matilda Curry. Your Excellency, the floor is yours. Thank you. Good afternoon, everyone, and warm greetings from the city of Beirut. And uh, I'm representing here today my city and the mayor who has been unable to make it due to unforeseen uh, reasons. Um, the topic uh, of this panel is crisis-ready uh, urban heritage. And uh, as most of you know, Beirut is a millennial city. Uh, it's a city infused with immense, uh, not just cultural and natural heritage. Um, it's a city of, of vast potential. But unfortunately, as many of you know as well, 
Beirut is um, a city which has been uh, has undergone a, se a series and a sequence of immense crisis. For the past 50 years, it has been crisis upon crisis upon crisis, which has rendered the city uh, fragile and uh, weak in terms of economy, uh, institutions, uh, in terms of its entire setup. Um, including fragilizing some of its historic uh, natural landscape and historic urban landscape. Um, to counteract this, a few years ago, the city of Beirut has embarked on the preparation of a comprehensive urban resilience master plan for the city, which um, is still incomplete. It's still in the process of preparation, but which is meant to prepare the city for uh, all sorts of risks and hazards and crises, including natural hazards and man-made hazards, whether uh, be it um, earthquakes, because Beirut is an earthquake-prone city, or tsunamis, or climate change, or hazards such as health uh, pandemics or socioeconomic hazards. Um, unfortunately, uh, Beirut uh, has, since 2019, has been under a severe um, distress situation, meaning that the crisis which Beirut is facing is beyond um, what any master plan or any preparedness could actually prepare the city for, because it's a compound crisis. Um, and one can say that Beirut is currently today at its darkest hour. Nevertheless, uh, we are still uh, very positive. We're still hoping because our city is, has immense potential. Um, we're still hoping that uh, part of our resilience master plan could actually um, go on to, to protect our cultural urban heritage and our natural heritage, and to make it an integral part of the city. My last word, um, I'm going to say that although the, the blast, which was happened less than a year ago in August 2020, destroyed a great part of the historic fabric of the city. Nonetheless, we've, it, it was immensely heartwarming to find that the people and the attachment of the, of the people to their cultural heritage made them you know, step in, even though the institutional aspect uh, uh, was weaker than uh, to, resp to respond to this uh, immense tragedy, the people have stepped in and you know, themselves started uh, in, in, in coordination with, with many actors, including local actors, local institutions on various levels, step in to restore this uh, cultural uh, urban heritage of Beirut. Um, this is all I'm going to say for, for, for today. And uh, it's, it's a mixed feeling. Beirut is always a mixed feeling. We're always between, it's an, a city of immense beauty, but at the same time, a city of immense you know, sadness and tragedy. So. Um, Words fade me at the moment, and thank you for, for the um, opportunity to present my city today. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much, uh, Your Excellency. It's uh, now my great pleasure to invite uh, Mr. Mukesh Kumar, uh, Municipal Commissioner of Ahmedabad. Your Excellency, the floor is yours. Yeah, good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, uh, this is Ahmedabad, uh, India. Uh, one of the recent addition to World City list uh, in 2017. The historic city of Ahmedabad <laughs> was planned in 14th century. The World City was chosen as a strategic site in the middle of the uh, Gujarat Kingdom. The centrally located new capital has to be safe and strong. At the same time, several of different communities were invited to inhabit the new city. Uh, it was chosen very carefully. The new city on the eastern bank of Sabat River on a level which was higher than the river bed. It was also observed that in this location is at a place where river steam takes a bend and so away from the site, but bending toward the southwest corner where the site itself slope giving possibility of uh, surface water drainage in the monsoon. Uh, these places are still a landmark in the city. In the local places, marking is an important indicator to the old city compared to the outgrown areas uh, in the contemporary and the uh, global city network right now. The climate change is the biggest challenge of the time the holistic idea of traditional urban settlement uh, in this uh, wall city area, which is a, a living wall city area, is much more complex than urban than other urban management areas. Uh, this is much more acute after the climate change indicators have proven to be determined of the many aspects of natural materials. Uh, I would like to mention the government of Gujarat uh, is one of the a few government in the 
our India, which has set up a dedicated climate change department to, to address look at issues. Uh, we in a local body work very closely with the government of Gujarat and the department uh, in terms of uh, getting a knowledge, know-how and hand-holding in the climate change issues uh, in the city of Ahmedabad. We not only learn from technology, but also learn from the generations of local knowledge. Ahmedabad city with a certain planning in the hierarchy of living environment, and not only where the streets are narrow, but it also gives a lot of community spaces uh, <coughs> which represent local wisdom and the sense of strong community bondage. The street laid closely uh, keeps public realm shaded in the hot sunny days, and incidentally, these streets are, are north and south where uh, the most of the day's time it is shaded and people are able to move freely without any uh, impact of sunlight. Which is, this all has impacted in, 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 a, in a manner where the internal courtyard also kept the household a uh, fresh air circulation which was running all across. Even till today, the average pole house is filled by more than two and three degrees in comparison to the RCC apartment in the new Ahmedabad. At the same time, the access to mobility and global connectivity has made the, the pace of daily life faster than ever. Dynamics of change is at speed in the last decade. HUL was declared in 2011 and Ahmedabad Municipal Corporation uh, was uh, looking at all the recommendations right from 2010 when it was looking at uh, World Heritage City nominations. And we have been actively uh, <coughs> using uh, HUL recommendation uh, for in our preparation for uh, those years and other current heritage management plans. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you, Thank you very much. Thank you very much, uh, Your Excellency. Um, be before we go to the next round of questions uh, and discussion with the panel, uh, please stay with us for a minute. We have now a message uh, from the mayor of Beijing, Mr. Chen. Jinning,尊敬的拉米雷斯先生,侯萨和拉尔女士,尊敬的各位嘉宾,女士们,先生们,同友们,大家好,感谢主办方的盛情邀请。有幸代表北京市政府参加这次联合国教科文组织城市历史景观建议书发布辞中年纪念活动城市历史景观建议书倡导将城市发展和遗产保护有机结合推动城市遗产理念从主要强调建筑遗址保护向综合考虑经济社
基础设施和环境，为社区创造更多的公共空间。我们立足文化多样性，致力于推动城市传统与现代、物质与非物质文化的包容共生，在保护过程中。既考虑不同街区建筑的历史特征，也尊重社区的文化传统、生活习惯，借鉴国际促进现代文化与历史风貌融合发展的经验，让历史文化与现代文明在北京交相辉映。女士们、先生们、朋友们，当前我们正在积极推进北京中轴线申遗。中轴线是北京这座历史文化名城的灵魂和脊梁，呈现了城市的建筑形态和规划格局，见证了中国四代更迭和社会生活变迁，是城市发展史和建筑艺术史上非常珍贵的历史文化遗产。北京中轴线承载的丰富历史文化内涵，与城市历史景观建议书所倡导的理念高度契合。我希望有机会与各位专家、嘉宾分享和探讨中轴线保护的工作理念、经验和做法，不断提高中轴线保护水平。女士们、先生们、朋友们，联合国教科文组织在城市历史景观保护方面一直发挥着重要作用。本次活动的举办，必将推动城市历史景观保护工作更加深入人心。北京市将积极与联合国教科文组织和世界各国城市开展国际合作，与大家一道为保护好、管理好、传承好人类共有的遗产而不懈努力。最后，祝本次大会活动取得圆满成功！谢谢大家。Thank you very much. Um, we will now continue with the first panel uh, on crisis ready uh, to what making cities crisis ready. Um, I have a question now for a second question now for the panelists. Climate change is one of the biggest challenges of our time. One of the key challenges uh, underlined by recent crises is uh, the need to not only look for solutions based on new technologies to face these challenges, but to learn from the generations of local knowledge, including traditional construction techniques and building practices, urban planning principles, and the relationship to the natural setting. How can urban heritage contribute to cultural preservation while also inspiring resilient and sustainable urban development solutions? Let me turn now uh, to our panelists, uh, Your Excellency, Mr. Solomon Guni. The floor is yours. Your Excellency, Mr. Solomon Guni. Uh, thank you. Uh, th thank you. Uh, the focus of the City of Law has been to balance the goals of urban heritage on one hand and those of the social and economic development on the other. It is important to achieve this balance and sustainable relationship between the urban and natural environment. For sustainable development to take place, it is important to take care of the needs of the present and future generations and also preserve the city's heritage. In addition to its intrinsic value of for present and future generations, heritage can also make an important instrumentation uh, instrumental contribution to sustainable development across its various dimensions through cultural tourism with uh, its associated benefits, such as building social capital, pre preservation of local traditions, customs, culture, and improve the image and pride promotion of urban beautification. So that's, that's my take on your question, Your Excellency. Thank you. Thank you very much. Um, now I turn to uh, Your Excellency, Mr. Jean-Louis Meleu of Grand Bassin. Bien, merci. Thank you. Yes, uh, 
Just like uh, other cities, unfortunately, uh, Grand Bassam has been affected by phenomena that have had an impact on uh, the preservation of its uh, uh, heritage. We felt this with climate change. Uh, we've seen that with the coastal waters because uh, we, uh, our city, is between the Laguna uh, and Laguna and the sea, and so obviously we've uh, uh, seen the problems with flooding uh, and uh, part of the old historic town that. Actually, see, is is on the World Heritage Site is now uh, in jeopardy. This is obviously a problem for the historic site, but also for the people who live there. And in terms of solutions, uh, uh, we can say that uh, the city of uh, Grand Bassam is actually working on a steering project uh, for the Maritime Recovery Project. Uh, and uh, uh, this means that uh, at the opening of the lagoon to the sea, a lot of work is being done to try to prevent future flooding. And the city is also uh, working on its uh, urban planning uh, so as to try to make sure that the guidelines for future local planning take into consideration such risks and also with that we uh, uh, that we work hand in hand with the agenda uh, 2030 uh, uh, and in this way we're hoping to protect our historical heritage and also manage the uh, the HUL of uh, uh, Grand Bassam but to ensure the kind of uh, integrated management for this, uh, we have three management tools at our disposal, which are inclusive tools uh, uh, covering all stakeholders. We've got an executive secretariat, uh, which on a daily basis undertakes initiatives for uh, protecting the site. We've also got a management team, which is there to validate uh, and, uh, and, uh, and assess uh, the projects uh, run underway. And finally, our third tool is uh, one for analysis, analyzing uh, what is to be done and what is uh, and what has been done, and so by working uh, at the different levels, uh, we've also uh, been able to. Uh, work with uh, the uh, with the professional schools and vocational training institutes uh, to take into consideration traditional building techniques, uh, so that these uh, traditional building techniques uh, use bricks and uh, and terracotta tiles, uh, uh, which uh, form part of our built heritage. Uh, and uh, when and, and we're using these techniques uh, when restoring and recovering our historical built heritage, and this will um, hopefully offset any negative impact. Of of the uh, of the uh, uh coastal uh, of the dangers of being in such a coastal setting the idea now is to set up several small firms uh, building in this uh, in, in this uh, domain after that uh, we're by by using the kind of uh, local cultural stakeholders uh, uh, and and their knowledge in in recovering our built heritage hopefully we're dovetailing both uh, the um, both the, the social and cultural aspects and the physical features of the city and uh, hopefully this will uh, ensure the continued safeguarding of our uh, historic urban landscape so we're trying to preserve uh, the traditional characteristics and also transmit that local knowledge uh, uh, of the artisans uh, to the future generations. I just wanted to take this opportunity here at the 10th anniversary of the uh, uh, 2011 recommendation on HUL, saying that uh, the local committees have been working very hard for the safeguarding and preservation of our uh, cultural, as, uh, cultural aspects as well as the artistic and architectural features. Thank you very much, and I wish you every success for this 10th anniversary. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much, uh, Your Excellency. I now invite uh, Ms. Matilda Curry, Your Excellency. Uh, the floor is yours. Thank you very much. Uh, can you see me? Yes. Okay, great. Yes. Uh, basically, one of the sustainable urban uh, development solutions that the city of Beirut has embarked on a few years ago in collaboration with Ile de France is a green cover and a gentle mobility master plan for the city. And the aim of this green cover and gentle mobility master plan is threefold mainly. One, to enhance the a green cover uh, of the city and hence uh, improve the livability and uh, address the climate change issues. Uh, second, the gentle mobility whereby uh, people in Beirut would be able to experience the city other than uh, uh, through vehicular mode of transport. 
And three was to intertwine through this um, green cover and gentle mobility master plan to intertwine the cultural assets and cultural heritage of Beirut, whereby the, we would be creating, you know, green path throughout the city, which would echo and, and boost and put the cultural urban heritage at its optimum uh, with respect to uh, tourism, socioeconomic uh, advantage and people's uh, use of the spaces of the city. So, and obviously all of this actually meets the, the Hull approach whereby um, it's not about restoring cultural heritage, it's not about, you know, buildings sitting as islands, it's about buildings being connected to the fabric of the city, whether it's the uh, openness spaces or the uh, socioeconomic fabric of the city. Uh, but unfortunately, again, since the title of our panel today is crisis ready, um, uh, the, the problem of, of, you know, preparing master plans in a city which is prone to high crisis situations is that the master plans, you know, get postponed to be implemented. They don't actually um, get implemented uh, in a timely manner. So this is it for me today. And thank you very much uh, for hosting me. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, I would now like to invite uh, Mr. Mukesh Kumar, we turn back to you, Your Excellency, from Ahmedabad, India. Thank you very much, uh, Ahmedabad Municipal Corporation, as a part of its uh, heritage uh, movement and journey. Uh, we have made a number of important decisions. One of the decisions has been that we will not widen the streets in the core areas uh, and retain its uh, footprint without any change. And this has been further ratified by the state government, and now uh, we are following it has become a local a part of local bylaws. The traditional courtyard type <coughs> typologies are now norm for uh, new buildings, which has been added again in the wall city areas. We don't permit any hollow planes or still parking, and setbacks uh, can relax uh, to meet the requirements of the traditional norms there. Uh, in terms of uh, 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 other key consideration, the streets were uh, public activities spaces. Uh, now also has to create infrastructure, and with a uh, narrow possible street network in the historic area. It became quite a challenging uh, to lay infrastructure. Laying electricity network underground was quite a difficult task in the wave of old city areas, but it did prove uh, to be an aesthetically very neat and clean and further safe also. Uh, we, uh, Ahmedabad, has been center stage electricity preservation uh, for a uh, long, long time, uh, not only for uh, monument, wall city, and infrigates of 15th century, but uh, as a local body, Amdal Municipal Corporation also provides uh, substantial assistance to the private residential heritage properties, where we are giving them financial instrument in terms of transfer development rights, which is a resellable commodity in, in, in the real estate market, where the private person is able to reach, is able to uh, get resources available uh, for heritage conservation and gets a substantial financial benefits as well. Uh, we continue to believe in the reuse and adoption uh, to the needs of the time as a key to minimize the impact of climate change uh, on the wall city areas. Uh, at, the, at the same time, new generation of the city will also uh, need to prepare for more meaningful use of resources and balance its requirement with carrying capacities as we have learned in the recent pandemic crisis. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, sir. We really appreciate these inputs uh, from you. And a, a very big thank you to the to the entire panel for, for these amazing insights. Um, I would now like to just request you for a minute, uh, uh, Madame Khari, if you could turn on your camera. We just take a, a photo of the uh, panel, of, of the first panel. Um, and then uh, I move now to our, uh, our video message. Uh, from the mayor of Ballarat, Mr. Daniel Maloney. Thank you very much again to your excellencies from panel one. Thank you. Thank you. My fellow mayors, distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen, it's my absolute pleasure to be joining you from my wonderful city of Ballarat in Australia to celebrate the 10th anniversary of the historic urban landscapes approach. Before I begin, I'd like to acknowledge the traditional Australian Aboriginal custodians of the land that's now known as Ballarat, the Wadawurrung people, 
and recognise their continuing connection to the land and the waterways. I pay respects to their elders past, present and emerging and extend that respect to all Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander people of Australia. My local community is passionate about Ballarat. We're one of the world's most historically significant and intact 19th century gold rush cities. However, our city is changing. How we retain the things we love most is one of our foremost challenges. In 2013, we joined the worldwide pilot to implement the Hull approach and build a strong foundation for sustainable development. But we're no longer piloting it. It's now being implemented and it's been transformative. It underpins our city's strategic vision. It shapes our engagement processes. It's embedded in our planning and it informs our actions. We see a future where we celebrate our city's unique identity, drawing on all the things that sets us apart, our people, our heritage, our culture, and our drive for innovation, where we're actively shaping the place we want to be, where we open our minds to how we can better bring our beautiful, historic city to life. Ballarat sought and was designated a UNESCO Creative City of Craft and Folk Art in 2019. That designation focuses on the development of a resilient and sustainable creative sector because the future of our city is in the spark of creative ideas. It's also focused the city's attention on walking alongside our First Nations peoples and supporting them in retracing the Aboriginal Australian heritage of craft skills which have been lost. To fully recognise our heritage and in partnership with 12 other local governments in our region, we're leading the charge to have our city and our region listed on the World Heritage List. Our research shows this region, which covers nearly 40,000 square kilometres, to be the most extensive, coherent and best surviving gold rush landscape anywhere in the world. Like many cities around the world, the Ballarat community has told us they want our city to preserve the past, to protect our heritage streetscapes, to respect our culturally significant land and waterways and to celebrate our Aboriginal and colonial stories. However, our community, like most, also want us to live in a city with thriving employment and economic opportunities. This means we're working to both strengthen our heritage tourism and protection of key heritage assets, while also developing a diverse and strong economy through health, education, manufacturing, IT and professional services. Indeed, Ballarat is still a gold rush city and gold is still mined today beneath our streets. However, the gold of the future is in the ongoing development of our renewable energy sector, circular economy and sustainability initiatives. The Hull approach provides the framework for a city like Ballarat to always respect and protect our heritage while providing new economic opportunities in appropriate areas. I sincerely wish to congratulate and thank UNESCO and all involved on reaching this significant milestone. And as a leading city for the Hull approach, we're proud to support the Hull recommendation call for action. On behalf of the people of Ballarat and Australia, we send our best wishes and thoughts to everyone during these very challenging times. When the time is right and global tourism resumes, hopefully in 2022, we look forward to welcoming you back to our city and to our country. I wish you all the very best for the remainder of this celebration. Thank you very much. That was, uh, that was really very good. Um, we now move to our second panel and it's our great honor to welcome uh, four excellent panelists. Uh, first, we have with us the uh, mayor of Querétaro, Mexico, Mr. Miguel Antonio Perodi Espinosa. You're welcome, sir. And then the mayor of uh, Abome, Pena, Mr. Cosi Antoine Louis Jidou. A warm welcome to you. And the mayor of uh, Gore, Senegal, Mr. Augustin Senghor. Welcome, sir. And the deputy mayor of, uh, of Dubrovnik, Croatia, Ms. Jalka Tepsik. Welcome, Hello. madam. Hi. We're going to, uh, as we did with the previous panel, I will pose one round of questions and then um, at the, each of you will have three minutes to respond to that question. And then we take a little break with a video and then have a second round. So this uh, focusing a bit more on local communities and a human centered urban future, I want to ask you what uh, has what has been uh, the way that your city and, and your policies have addressed uh, the current pandemic? 
How has the COVID-19 pandemic and the subsequent drop in tourism changed the way we approach urban heritage, in your view? Has, how has there been a shift in focus uh, in your city uh, from tourism to local communities and livelihoods? I want to begin by inviting you, uh, Your Excellency, Mr. Miguel Antonio Perodi of Queretaro, to first take the floor. Sir, the floor is yours. Your Excellency, Mr. Perodi, are you connected? Yes, please go ahead, sir. You, you need to unmute your mic, sir. Please Perdón, go ahead. Jody, soy Joel. Tenía que gusto saludarte, gracias. Okay, I think you can hear me now. Are we, can we, are we moving on with the program? Well, it's, it's great to be with you here in Paris, but there seems to be some lapse in the timing here. I'm very pleased to be with you all today. I'm not sure whether I can answer the question that you raised. We've got the other two cities as well that are here to respond. Perhaps they can answer first of all. Go ahead, sir. Go ahead with your statement, and then we will move to the other cities. Please, sir. You can tell us about whatever actions you're doing in your city. The question is more a prompt. I don't know if we can pass on to the next to the next uh, image and we'll get this Mr. Parani perhaps there seems to be a problem with the connection there seems to be a problem with the connection so I will pass to the next uh, panelist um, may I invite uh, Mr. Kosi Antoine Louis Jedu uh, from Abome? The floor is yours, Your Excellency. Please un unmute your mic and go ahead, sir. Monsieur, uh, Monsieur Jedu, est-ce que vous m'entendez? Votre Excellence. Okay, I think we he was here and online, so there seems to be a connection. Okay, maybe we move to the next panelist, Mr. Augustin Singo. Uh, Your Excellency, the floor is yours. Oui, oui, bonjour. Yes, thank you very much. Thank you very much. I'm very pleased to be able to participate in this event, in this uh, celebration of the 10th anniversary of the recommendation of UNESCO. So it's, a very, it's an important event for us to be celebrating the 10th anniversary of the Hull, and it's very pleasant, for, uh, very pleasing for me to be in panel number two. I wanted to look at how the local communities could be uh, empowered through a, a human-centered urban future. And I'm very pleased to be able to interview on the two points, uh, the two questions that were asked of us. The first, of course, is a question about changes that may have been uh, implemented in our urban development following the COVID-19 pandemic and how that has touched upon uh, the tourist industry. I just wanted to say quite simply here that um, our, the island of Gore is 
a site which is a part which is one of the uh, UNESCO World Heritage Sites, not just because of its historic importance and its, uh, 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 the, the role it has played, but because it also has a very close uh, link to the um, memory of our culture. I think it's also a very close a direct link with the uh, historic heritage. It's a... We actually encapsulate uh, the whole of the of world history because many uh, different European populations and civilizations have come through here as well but it's uh, the interest is actually less historic but than the natural because we are a city which can only be reached by boat from Dakar the capital of Senegal so this actually creates a very unusual environment and also of course is a, a touristic attraction and uh, it, we are unlike any other commune in Senegal because all of our activity or 90% of our activity is actually a uh, tourism or paratourism activities. So you can simply imagine, easily imagine the impact of COVID-19 on our island with the, and the measures that had to be undertaken by the authorities, such as a curfew and limited um, movements. And the whole time, uh, Gore has actually been closed to any visitors, whereas that was actually the first activity, economic activity of the island and has been. F uh, so for six to eight months, we had to close our uh, close up altogether, the, where we had about 500,000 um, visitors per year, year normally. We, we got these figures from the shipping authorities in Dakar. We've seen that we had no visitors, no visitors at all to the island. And we also were ha had a uh, curfew in the for the islanders themselves. So we had to then introduce a whole new uh, set of measures to enable the population to overcome these difficulties. And we when you depend on tourism to that extent, and this pandemic has shown us the limitations that uh, tourism can have on somewhere like Gore, so we have tried to work in a different manner. The island has tried to open up other activities to establish a different type of uh, of tourism, one which is much more national rather than international. Because, as you know, we don't actually only we depend on the on the boats that bring tourists tourists across uh, to Gore, but also we depend on on flights to bring tourists across. And when international flights towards Senegal had were, had stopped, uh, that prevented us from actually having any of this type of, of, of tourism. But with the maritime crossing, we have been able to attract some national visitors onto the island. And that's how we've been able to maintain a, a, some type of activity. Um, and OK, we're, we have been able to do uh, something in the past months. We've got some, got some like maybe 40 percent of our activity back. But the commune of uh, in, in Gore has worked a lot to try and improve the uh, environment uh, to create new spaces to benefit from the fact that we had no tourism, tourism to, to turn to the hotel um, owners and ask them to actually expand the type of offer that they had, the type of, of services that they were offering. And we worked a lot to work on the, the memory of the island of Gore because uh, we uh, wanted to move back towards a natural tourism. And we tried to develop the space differently and and uh, to exploit the local heritage and make that put that at the heart of our tourist activity so we're hoping that once international traffic starts again once it reaches a larger scale we will then be able to uh, develop this ter tourism uh, this particular focus of our tourism and be more resilient, I hope, if, if, if should we be faced with a handicap of this type in the, again. And then there's a second question, and I'll go quite quickly on this, if I may. There's, there was a second question you asked about the um, 
whether or not we turned towards the local communities more and developed towards the interests of the local communities more than tourism. And I must say that we have actually tried to look at our cultural heritage and bring that alongside the natural heritage that we have, the natural advantages that we have on our island. Um, we've had a lot of problems with marine erosion, and we know very well that if the natural structure of the, of the island is under a threat, then the entire activity on the island is going to be under threat. A number of the buildings that we have are of inestimable value, and we need to actually ensure that we fight against environmental damage to our island to make sure that we protect everything. So we've got to protect the cultural and the um, natural uh, heritage at the same time. And this has made us to start a, a new type of uh, heritage management uh, program where we were hoping to attract a lot of people to Gore, but also we wanted to make the, visit, the, the this island itself more agreeable to live in. So we wanted to improve our lifestyle, to live better, to live better. And that's, that is really focused more at the locals, the local population. But also we're hoping that we, Gore is going to, we, we get, we get thousands of uh, tourists every year from all over the place, and so we wanted to actually make their experience better. And that's what I wanted to put forward to the, uh, to the panel discussion. I don't want to overdo my, over take, take, take too much time. Merci. Merci beaucoup. Well, thank you very much. Okay. Now, I think that uh, we have uh, the mayor of uh, Abome connected, uh, so I will uh, very quickly Oui, uh, Monsieur. Uh... Yes, Your Excellency, Mr. De Dieu. Are you able to hear us? Yes, I can hear you quite well. Thank you. Yes, please proceed. Mr. Assistant Director General of UNESCO. Madam. Deputy Director of the World Heritage Center of the Culture Sector. My dear colleagues, mayors from around the world, ladies and gentlemen, good afternoon. Before anything else, uh, allow me to wish you from the municipality of Al Romé and uh, my personal gratitude uh, for the invitation to participate in this uh, 10th anniversary event for the 2011 UNESCO Historic Urban Landscape Recommendation. I just wanted to say a little word about Avril May, which is in the central plateau, uh, uh, so just a two hours drive from the international uh, I mean, IT airport. Um, it's the historic capital of Benin and uh, is uh, rather large. It is part of the former kingdom uh, with its history extending back uh, uh, from uh, 1600 to 1900, uh, we've got royal palace sites which have been uh, inscribed on the UNESCO World Heritage uh, List uh, in, in December of uh, 1985. As far as we are concerned, uh, during the COVID-19 uh, pandemic, uh, and uh, we saw the tourist uh, sector severely affected, uh, and we had to uh, adapt uh, because normally the historic center has uh, has a vibrant uh, tourist center, but this has obviously has. Uh, we, we saw that uh, Abu Meza tourist sector was uh, severely uh, hit by the pandemic. Uh, in the central part, for example, in 2019, there were approximately 40,000 uh, tourists who came. But in 2020, barely 10,000 tourists who visited. 
And so, as you can imagine, the consequences of an economic, social and political nature were severe. With the loss of this uh, tourist sector, uh, some livelihoods uh, were threatened socially. The uh, drop in, uh, in income has also been uh, very noticeable. And this situation meant that there was a deficit uh, when it come to the average household uh, income. On a political level, we can say that uh, decisions such as uh, the closure of our borders or the lockdown or the requirement that everybody wear a mask and respect the social distancing measures uh, really were felt uh, in everyone's daily lives. As uh, has been stipulated in Article 22 of the 2011 UNESCO recommendation on, on HUL, the safeguarding of uh, uh, urban heritage needs to be integrated into urban planning and uh, overall urban practices, uh, as well as uh, uh, on initiatives concerning an extended urban fabric which means that the policies need to reconcile the preservation on the one hand and the long-term uh, durability and sustainability of the, of the urban uh, ensemble as a whole, which means that we need to rely not only on, uh, on heritage specialists, but also dovetail this with our tourist and social interests. Uh, so therefore, states have a major role to play when it comes to implementing uh, the, uh, the, the vaccination plans for, for future tourists uh, and for ensuring that we can overcome this pandemic and therefore re the tourist sector could recover. Also, as for subsistence measures uh, uh, for the population, it's important uh, to uh, continue that education, uh, to make sure that education can continue with the due respect for social distancing measures. Uh, that's all for now. Thank you. As for your, on the first question, the second question. Uh, we will come back to the second round uh, when all the panelists have had a chance to respond uh, to the first question. Thank you. I just wanted to highlight a number of challenges related to COVID-19, particularly the quality of life and the well-being of local uh, communities uh, and, uh, the, uh, and the, the preservation of a social and cultural diversity. And, uh, and also for retaining the, uh, the social links and, uh, and diversity within our historic urban landscapes. So, Everything to do with the tourist sector was severely affected, and therefore there are two broad-ranging uh, initiatives at stake. Firstly, a social cohesion, and secondly, preserving the uh, this uh, historic urban ensemble. So, uh, thank you very much, this says the moderator. Thank you. Thank you very much, sir. Uh, we uh, really appreciate these uh, incredible insights. We want to give a chance to some of the other uh, panelists to, to share also their viewpoints with us. So if you will allow us, uh, we will uh, move now to Ms. Uh, Jelka Tepsik, uh, the Deputy Mayor of Dubrovnik. Your Excellency, please take the floor. Thank you very much. And uh, on behalf of Dubrovnik Mayor, Mr. Frankovic, who was unfortunately unable to participate today, I've just extend his greetings and congratulations on this great anniversary, which is also 
I mean, full recommendations are really important also for the city of Dubrovnik. Regarding the first question, I have to stress that the city of Dubrovnik was inscripted at UNESCO uh, heritage list back in 1979. It's really a long time ago. And we are very proud of that fact that we are second city in Europe after, just after Krakow to be protected by UNESCO. Uh, at the same time, the city of Dubrovnik is extremely dependent, uh, financially dependent on tourism uh, because more than 80% of our economy is strongly associated with tourism and the uh, rest are various areas also uh, indirectly related to this main business. In 2019, uh, we had over 1.4 million tourist arrivals and more than 4.3 million overnights, which is uh, really a lot. And also beside these uh, figures uh, describing how many tourists are spending their holidays in Dubrovnik, we had some 700,000 visitors on cruise ships. So tourism changes the, the conditions of living in many ways. Uh, some of them are positive, some of them uh, are uh, also negative. But uh, when we took the responsibility for governing this city back in 2017, uh, we were really determined to turn the Brownick into a leader in sustainable tourism in the Mediterranean area. So we started to develop the strategic program, which is called Respect the City, which has in, in his center, uh, the main figure is the, the resident or inhabitants of Dubrovnik. And of course, uh, other main figures are tourists because we want them to have a higher quality of the experience in our city. We began tackling difficult change challenges before us through different measures uh, of relieving traffic congestions, implementing smart city solutions. It was a relatively short period of time, but we began to note and to, to, to note uh, quite change uh, even in 2018 and of course in 2019 uh, because we had some approvals that we are heading a good way heading towards the sustainability and uh, of course as i mentioned earlier we would like our tourists uh, to have a better uh, satisfaction rate and uh, our citizens to have higher quality of life. In the global crisis and very difficult times for Dubrovnik uh, and uh, as, uh, also for uh, all the world, uh, we were almost completely left without uh, main economic branch. Uh, there were some recoveries noticed uh, in the, sum the summer of 2020. Uh, regarding tourism, but in general, we had, uh, well, the budget of the city suffered quite a lot. Uh, but despite that situation and the fact that our main income from comes from tourism activity, we uh, never uh, lost sight of the set goals and the need of city for further development in the right direction. So meaning that we used the crisis as a new beginning and also as a, new, as a moment uh, for uh, biggest change. So uh, speaking about the renewal of the activities of city restoration and protection of heritage, uh, they are both dependent on each other. Cultural heritage of the Brownick is in, in really good, uh, I dare to say, in excellent conditions, and we are continuously investing in the restoration. Uh, richness of our heritage is certainly one of the comparative advantages of cities under UNESCO protection. So uh, UNESCO city, uh, it, probably guaranteed to be rebuilt sooner and uh, comparing to other cities. So heritage for us is always uh, very important. Dubrovnik is uh, at the moment even more beautiful without uh, crowds. And we believe that we will find the right path uh, to continue to develop and uh, our better management, better management of our city in the future, hoping without COVID crisis, which we managed quite quite well in Croatia, it's, it's, it's a green zone now and we are expecting tourism to recover uh, quite good in the months to come. Thank you so much. Thank you, thank you very much. Um, I'm now uh, would like to invite uh, the, uh, the mayor of uh, Queretaro, 
Uh, Mr. Uh, Miguel Antonio Parodi, Your Excellency, uh, should the floor is yours now. Muy buenos días. Good afternoon and greetings to the Deputy Director of the World Heritage Center, Jyotihai Asakarara. I also wanted to uh, thank you, our Director of uh, uh, of uh, Local Heritage, uh, our Chief Architect, uh, and also the World Heritage for Ketaro uh, Board, who are here with me. We saw a 70% drop in uh, in our uh, visitors uh, to Keretaro from um, because of the pandemic from 2018 to 2020. This has been a massive loss in income, and uh, and and uh, a dreadful uh, plummeting of the number of visitors. And in 2020. Only uh, 200,000 uh, pesos uh, in income and very few tourists. Uh, this affected all touristy sectors, be it cultural, recreational, business, uh, and also all of the associated businesses, be it restaurants, uh, businesses, uh, uh, souvenir shops, hotels, etc., and other services that tourists use. We have been moving forward, and this year we've seen a, a kind of a restart. Uh, with also, uh, with a doubling of the number of uh, pesos uh, registered, and uh, this gives us sign for hope. When it comes to the recovery, uh, the emerging plan for uh, for our heritage sector was very important. This included promoting uh, the, uh, the the visibility of our heritage among the inhabitants, uh, and uh, despite the loss in tourists. Uh, we also wanted to get the year started with an economic recovery plan for the tourist zones, following the recommendations from the uh, concern, following the health guidelines, and ensuring that uh, the that uh, private and public uh, space occupation was uh, kept under control, so as not to have uh, huge conglomerations of people. There were regional initiatives uh, that pl placed emphasis on cultural factors. For example, on the 19th to 25th of July, there will be a national and international program for a uh, paper mache. That's a, uh, um, uh, paper mache festival celebrating the anniversary of the founding of our city in September. As another example, we will have the uh, the G67 um, um, event uh, for art and cu culture, and these are kinds of initiatives uh, um, are the local ones. But we also work hand in hand with other cities around the world to try to ensure. Uh, the revival of our uh, tourist and cultural sectors. Over and above this, we are also hoping to uh, see greater participation in uh, national initiatives. Through these kinds of activities, we're trying to focus on, on uh, tourism as one of the pillars of our economic recovery. And this is uh, uh, going to improve the lives of millions, uh, of thousands of families who have a connection with the uh, with the tourist sector because of the historic monument zone of Caretaro, which is on the World Heritage List. The old colonial town of Caretaro is uh, uh, important also for uh, national international uh, recognition. And uh, we are trying to promote the cultural essence of the town and not only its physical features. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you very much uh, for your uh, uh, intervention. That was very valuable. We have uh, some amazing good news. Uh, we have uh, the mayor of Carthage with us, uh, Dr. Hayat Bayud. We had initially planned a video a recording from her because we thought that we would not be able to have her with us, but we are delighted indeed. Uh, Your Excellency, are you able to connect?
Your Excellency, Madame Bayoun, are you able to connect? Okay, perhaps uh, we go through the second round of questions and we can come back to see if uh, maybe she's able to connect. I know that she is with us, but I'm not sure that she's able to connect. Okay, um, we will continue with the panel and then and come back to her after we finish uh, the second round of questions. Um, but before that, before we move to the second round of questions, I want to take a little break. Uh, so please stay with us. We have a short uh, message from uh, the video, uh, uh, a video message from the mayor of, uh, of Graz in Austria, Mr. Siegfried Nagy. Please, uh, the video. Ladies and gentlemen, I would like to extend a very warm welcome from Graz. As a human rights city, a city of design, and a World Heritage Site, we are closely connected to the in many ways. A city like Graz, which is medium-sized by European standards, is very aware of the potential of the three middle letters in UNESCO, E for education, S for science, and C for culture for future-oriented urban development. Ten years of the recommendation on the historic urban landscape strengthened my conviction as mayor of the city, which in the last 10 years has been the fastest growing metropolitan region in Austria, that we must treat our high quality habited city in a resource-friendly manner. The preservation of Graz's valuable historic center has been a focal point of urban life in Graz for decades. The historic center is an anchor and identity marker for us, the residents of Graz, and is therefore a constant concern. For decades, the people of Graz have distinguished themselves by their great commitment to the preservation of the architectural heritage without standing in the way of the further development which is inherent in a flourishing city worth living in. The quality of the urban habitat, the parallel development of residential and recreational space has made enormous progress in Graz in the last 10 years. As the Graz Historic Center Protection Act, which has protected our architectural heritage and our historic center since 1974, is also the most important tool in the preservation of the UNESCO World Heritage Site Graz. That recommendation on the historic urban landscape provides a significant basis and guideline for our actions. In addition, the city of Graz has taken active steps to put measures against climate change in place and implement new ecological standards that make the city as a living space fit for the future. Graz has established a Climate Protection Advisory Board. Earmarked funds have been made available in specially created fund that promotes climate protection projects. These projects are examined with regards to a balanced carbon footprint and they increase sustainability of which signs are already emerging in the cityscape. The social component of involving citizens is also a major concern for us, which is why a separate department takes care of the involvement of the population so that the high quality development of our habitats serves everyone. So this cooperation, that is the preservation of the historical architecture, while at the same time ensuring the sensitive and ecologically sustainable development of the city. Also, by way of high quality contemporary architecture, Graz can secure its high standards of living and makes its contribution in terms of UNESCO's recommendation on the historic urban landscape. In this spirit, I hope that the conference participants will enjoy many interesting contributions and stimulating discussions. All the best. Thank you. Thank you very much. Okay, so we will now move to the second panel. Um, 
the second pan the second round of the second panel. Um, so another of the key challenges underlined uh, by the COVID-19 pandemic is the need to put a special focus on livability and well-being of the local communities, with one of the key goals being the preservation of the social and cultural diversity of city centers. How can urban heritage contribute to diversity and social cohesion? Do you propose any changes in public space and mobility in your historic city to enhance the well being of local communities? So, to reflect on this question, I will uh, again uh, invite uh, our uh, panelists and, and start this time again with Mr. Miguel Antonio Parodi from Queretaro. Your Excellency, the floor is yours for three minutes. Nuevamente, muchas gracias. Thank you again. In the historic centers here in Latin America, the creation of a municipal, a municipals which are focused on uh, world heritage is such has, has had to, we've actually had very good results. We have the firm belief that a specialization in our uh, of our society in our our, uh, our cultural heritage and creating a modern city, uh, creating a modern city is something which we've got to strive towards constantly. In Coretaro in two thousand and eight. We set up different. We came up with different de development plans for the historic center, looking at the urban development and seeing how we could actually bring together all parts of society. We wanted a balanced development where we were able to protect the historical center as the heart of the city without putting it at risk, and this enabled us to ensure that the cha the, the, the changes in our urban development were actually. Uh, something which was carried by the population and which was enabled enabled us to protect these uh, cultural centers during the second semester of 2020 the uh, which we were in difficulties of course with the pandemic but during the first and in the first uh, semester of 2021 we in Ketero developed a, a new urban development plan where we wanted to try and protect all of the historical monuments in Ketero uh, we uh, used the recommendations of the hull and also the uh, recommendations also for sustainable development from 20 the agenda 2030 to actually f f feed into our plans and we involved this. We can include this in our. Uh, we include the recommendation of 2011 in our de uh, urban development plans. We also created. A, uh, we created a uh, sector within our town hall who were actually responsible for uh, protecting our, our cultural heritage. And we have uh, involved numerous stakeholders in our plans and in involved also the residents. We wanted to make sure that the city was still livable, and we wanted to make sure that the the center, the, 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 that there was a, a residence, um, uh, residential spaces within the center, the, the old town center. We wanted to make sure also that we had uh, our cent that our cultural and uh, 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 urban heritage continued as was was in a continuity, and we want we believe that this can be done uh, throughout all of our Mexican cities where we have uh, world heritage, and and indeed throughout the whole of Latin America. This is something which we believe will enable us to consolidate the. Uh, the historic center and also develop uh, some private interests as well. We believe that we have got to understand the important role of residents uh, who have got a role to play in protecting and preserving these historic centers. Also, we believe that changes that could be seen in public spaces have got to also be worked uh, have been have got to be worked out with the residents. They have got to actually take ownership of the space, and we've got to ensure that they are part of this de debate on the public space. So any time that we have any type of strategy for urban development, we must make sure that the citizens are behind it and that we maintain a lively and living historic centre. For Quetero, it's very important that we actually use our specialised agencies to do this and make sure that we are protecting our cultural sites, but also that we are supported by citizen participation in protecting our cultural heritage and, and our historical heritage, so that, because it's for all population, all, the, all of the population and for the benefit of everyone. Thank you very much. Thank you very much for your very kind and, and very informative, very rich response. I uh, now uh, pass the floor to Your Excellency, Mr. Uh, 
Kusi Antoine Louis uh, Jedu, the mayor of Abome. Please, sir, go ahead. Uh, what micro? Uh, what excellent? Oui, oui. Merci. Oui, now. I think it's okay now. Yes, indeed, it's fine. Ladies and gentlemen, this uh, is one of our main concerns actually in the shadow of COVID-19 is the quality of life and the well-being of the entire community. That has got to be our major, our major focal point. How we can maintain uh, the it's the the uh, liveliness of our of our town centres and our our, our our urban centres. I think this is this is uh, shows us how we how we've got to actually stress the importance of social cohesion within the urban development because of course the urban development is also uh, at the very heart of any tourist activity. And cultural diversity and social cohesion go hand in glove. These are the sine qua non requirements for a good living standard and well-being of our communities and at local level. Urban heritage and the cultural and uh, historical heritage of our cities has got to be understood as being uh, a national historic uh, heritage, in fact, belonging to uh, to everyone at international level. It's also, indeed, the heart of the, um, the meeting place for all cultures in the in public spaces. This is particularly the case, and so uh, cultural diversity is is got to be respected to make sure that we have social cohesion within our our towns. We have not suggested any changes to our public spaces at this stage because that might create uh, our, uh, barriers. We think it's important that we have a real mix within our capitals, and that actually is what provides uh, this diversity. So thank you very much, and thank you for the opportunity to, to participate in this debate today and to understand better the problems that we are all com confronting following the pandemic. Thank you. Thank you very much, Your Excellency. I now pass the floor to uh, the, Your Excellency, Mr. Augustin Senghor, Monsieur Le Maire. Do you hear me? Can you hear me, Mr. Mayor? Yes. I can hear you now. Can I now ask the next speaker to respond? I can hear you. Okay. Maybe uh, maybe the connection is not very good. We pass to the next speaker. Um, Ms. Uh, Yalka Tepsik from uh, the, the Deputy Mayor of Dubrovnik. Uh, the floor is yours, madam. Thank you very much. Uh, well, I would like to uh, stress that uh, the city of Dubrovnik is, uh, as a World Heritage Site, is an example of well-preserved, planned medieval city, unique urban area with historic core surrounded by city walls and the coast and slopes of the Search Hill. Uh, together with its setting, uh, WHS in Dubrovnik forms an integral core where different components contribute to the overall significance of the site. Uh, WHS HS is a living part of the entire urbanized area, and the city is symbol of creation, culture, traditions, and outstanding achievements in the fields of urbanism, architecture, fine arts, and literature. So the nurturing provided by its citizens helped preserve and pass on to this day local customs from the Middle Ages and the Renaissance. Uh, what is very important for us is, is that uh, we just adopted the first management plan uh, unanimously by the City Council in March of 2021. So there are more than 20, 50 activities proposed in the action plan to support six priority goals to enhance the OUV of the World Heritage Site of the City of Dubrovnik. So the priorities are 
World Heritage Site Management and the Capacity Building, Protection, Conservation and Maintenance, Sustainable Development, Living City, Tourism Management, Traffic Management and Risk Management. Uh, the same, the very development of the management plan was approached in a participatory and comprehensive manner using civil, civic engagement tools. A number of participation activities involving citizens, NGOs, and other key stakeholders were held. These meetings resulted in numerous proposals and suggestions aimed at improving the lives and work of the population. Involving the local community and the civil sector in the WHS management provided an opportunity to exchange information and knowledge and develop collective responsibility as well as to obtain the community support for actions uh, aimed at protecting and improving the uh, WHS values. The wall city needs to remain an European center from which the cities identify stems and gives rise to an appreciation and understanding of it among the entire local community as part of their municipal heritage and uh, identity. Only uh, then will the community be able to preserve the heritage and pass it on a new generation. So to support the implementation of the HAL approach, uh, different tools have been taken into account while developing the, our management uh, action plan. For example, on, on the first place, the civic engagement tools. Uh, during the implementation of our management plan, the World Heritage Dialogue will be established as a multi-sectoral platform and working group involving the widest range of stakeholders from all sectors, which is a tool for citizen and civil society organizations uh, and, of course, association uh, that they are exceptionally potential and important link in the management plan. It's proposed also to establish a network of the Dubrovnik World Heritage Centers uh, around the city, not only in the central zone, that will form a cap cap capillary system of interpretation, education, and empowerment of uh, all involved stakeholders. It would consist of uh, spaces located on the World Heritage Site itself, but also in the whole historic urban area. Uh, second is the knowledge and planning tools. Uh, development and implementation of stakeholder capacity building strategy is aimed at strengthening stakeholder capacity through the implementation of the management plan. Uh, this strategy will include a variety of activities, including public lectures and conferences, thematic workshops dealing with specific technical or management issues, program for children and youth. With such a strategy, it's possible to inform stakeholders and community members about conservation policies and strategies and to make public more aware about the values in the area where they live. So uh, the city of Dubrovnik in general has very active dialogue with its citizens, but it's necessary to introduce systematic education and the relationship of public administration with non-institutional and non-political actors, communication with the civil sector and citizen participation in decision-making to improve public awareness of world heritage management. So the revitalization of life in the city and strengthening of the local community are primary conditions to be met in order to preserve the cultural and social identity of the area. Uh, this means that WHS protection must involve awareness raising about the city as a place of everyday life. The preservation of a living city implies protection of both space and quality of life of the local community as the bearer of specific local identity. Sustainable development, on the other hand, implies establishing a balance between everyday life and tourism, involving the local community in decision making and strengthening the cooperation of all relevant stakeholders with the first management plan, uh, which was, uh, as I said, recently adopted with, uh, all, with the common objective of preserving the Grodnik uh, cultural heritage. In this sense, it's very it's necessary to continuously and jointly work on limiting and eliminating the negative impacts on the WHS, both as a tourist destination and as a living city, and on the natural environment, such as uh, small island rock locker, which is in the very vicinity of the old city, the hill search 
or uh, Adriatic Sea, which surrounds the city, etc. Continuous improvement and development of the infrastructure network is also a prerequisite for increasing the quality of life of residents and visitors. New solutions need to be found to improve the microclimate inside the WHS area. Implementation of more technical and ecological solutions will contribute to improvement in quality of life while preserving WHS values at the same time. So we have four main actions, which are develop a social housing fund and cooperative housing model in the protected area. Uh, action number two is monitoring of socioeconomic and vital statistics in the World Heritage Site area. Uh, number three is determine income assessment ceilings in order to improve housing conditions, social housing, protected tenants. And action four is reconstruction of housing stock and enhancement of housing conditions with the aim of reaching earthquake risk resilience. So uh, throughout the uh, last few de decades, since 1979 earthquake, uh, we do have a systematic seismic rehabilitation program, which is developed by, by, by our Institute for Restoration and implemented ever since. But it needs to be continued and implemented for the entire WHS area. So our management plan is, uh, I shortly tried to present it to you. It's very important document uh, for for the local government, and we believe we will be able to develop different strategies, plans, and programs uh, to make uh, our citizens' uh, everyday life even uh, nicer and better quality in our old zone. At the same time, to protect the tangible and intangible heritage, which we inherited from our ancestors, and we are uh, aiming to uh, give to our few, to future generations. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you very much, Your Excellency. Um, I will now, uh, I have the pleasure and the honor of, uh, of inviting Dr. Hayat Bayut, the Mayor of Kathash. Uh, we're delighted to have you with us, uh, Your Excellency. Um, would you like to respond to the questions? So the first question had to do more with the, the uh, COVID-19 and the, the loss of... Bonjour. Um, with the uh, loss of... Allô? Bonjour, yes, madame. Excusez-moi, bon, je n'étais pas uh, en contact direct avec la question. S'il y a une question que je peux en... I wasn't actually connected to that question directly. Um, I, I wasn't sure whether you wanted me to ask those, answer those questions or whether you wanted me to give my other presentation. Should I, should I kind of intervene? Okay. D'accord. Merci beaucoup. Oui. Merci de m'avoir yeah. permis donc d'intervenir sur... So, thank you. Thank you very much for the invitation to take part. Alors, oui. Yes, uh, can you hear me? Oui, oui. Yes, yes, please proceed. Thank you. Yes, so, yes, you know, the archaeological uh, sites uh, of Carthage uh, are one of the uh, uh, heritage sites inscribed since 1979. And we've uh, done a lot working with the stakeholders uh, to uh, maintain the heritage and to implement the 2011 recommendation. We have a uh, think tank for the principles of the, uh, um, of the uh, heritage of Carthage. And um, they will be working uh, hand in hand with UNESCO teams and experts with four objectives. So what we're trying to do is to try and ensure that we're able to make the transition between a p protective policy for our monuments towards something which might actually promote a classification, a historical classification of the uh, of the site, and also to to understand the importance of the uh, historic, the natural and the man-made uh, heritage. But I think it's important to protect it. But I think we've also got to actually ensure that we have a strategy for protecting. This, this heritage within a broader objective, rather than just looking at, at it in that in that very restricted manner. But we actually look at it from a, a more sustainable development perspective. The second objective is to work for the promulgation of the uh, protection uh, protection protection of this uh, site, which actually limit the way in which the uh, these um, archaeological sites can actually be used. So we'd actually be able to we would make sure that we were not going to be able to have any uh, wild building or any any um, unregulated building in the area. We also wanted to look at the uh, the 
the uh, HUL uh, approach in how we develop the city of Carthage further. Uh, so we wanted to be able to adopt the recommendations of the, of the HUL from UNESCO. And the fourth objective, and not the one at the least, is to try and integrate new technologies and new uh, IT and artificial intelligence into our programs to promote the uh, HUL and to make sure that we understand properly the, the, the contemporary uh, city. So on the question as to how we're going to do this, we're going to be implementing these orientations in, in a strategic manner. We've got five major action pro points. The first is to have a carry out an evaluation of the conservation uh, policy, looking at it from the under the recommendations of the HUL. The second is going to be trying to set up training sessions for uh, people working within the town hall and NGOs uh, with Tunisian experts and foreign experts, people coming from uh, from UNESCO and Cosmos. And the third action plan is going to be. Uh, having a participative uh, policy for the the uh, area which will be looking at uh, the the zone in from a, a geo geological uh, point of view and the historical and archaeological zone is we've seen various civilizations in this area uh, and we're we've going back right back to the the, the various uh, stages of uh, the of, of, of civilizations and then we've also got of course the modern city and it's spread that it, and the modern um, uh, urban development centered on the human being and the fourth action is the establishment of a communication uh, multi-channel um, communication strategy using different types of media, uh, using the social networks and the press and uh, other networks. And the fifth uh, action plan is going to be publishing the results of all of this on the town hall's website, uh, uh, which will be entitled the, 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 site, the Carthage site. And this is a totally integrated uh, approach. It is fully uh, con continuous with in, in, in many areas. And we've seen this in other areas of the world. And I think that's going to enable Carthage to actually be able to play its, million, its, 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 its um, millennium role. And I think show its importance in the area of human and uh, world heritage. So that's what I wanted to say, but I'm very pleased that you've given me the opportunity to take the floor today. Thank you very much. Thank you so very much, uh, Madam Mayor. We are very happy to have you with us, and thank you for your intervention. I now uh, want to request uh, Mr. Uh, Augustin Senghor, uh, if you would like to respond uh, from, from Gore in Senegal, if you would like to respond to the second question regarding local communities. The floor is yours, sir. You need to unmute the microphone, sir. Merci beaucoup. Thank you very much, madam. Yes, this is ready. So thank you very much, Madam Chair. As concerns this a second question concerning the challenges uh, of the COVID-19 pandemic and uh, the uh, uh, focus on livability and well-being of local communities, well, uh, and and especially as concerns uh, social and cultural diversity of city centers and how to preserve it. What I could say is, uh, as uh, I mentioned before, Gure uh, has, uh, uh, is a very cultural uh, city with a strong community presence. So we have, uh, uh, even though the community presence might not be uh, so strong, we have a diaspora. And as such, we uh, are all uh, very interested in in, in uh, preserving our, our heritage, and it's those social uh, connections that mean that uh, people understand and want to protect their uh, their heritage. Even before the advent of the uh, of the pandemic, we were already working on uh, on this uh, in Gore hand in hand with the World Heritage Center. Because unlike uh, many other communities, uh, uh, Gore has a very small community, but plays a major role uh, in uh, uh, 
both currently and in the past. So from this very restricted small space, which is only about 27 hectares, uh, there, with its a um, thousand or so inhabitants, uh, um, they are uh, very concerned about preserving the historic uh, characteristics. Uh, and uh, this is why we are uh, hoping to uh, to valorize the, the the heritage aspects of the site uh, when we when we think about our um, our, our, our future development uh, this is of primary importance in Goree. since we've got uh, around uh, 2000 inhabitants um, uh, uh, people might think it's small, but it actually uh, rises to six or seven thousand. Um, in other words, we get more than double the population visiting in any given day. At least uh, that is a normal uh, day, and we could hypothesize uh, concerning the the island's uh, uh, um, management uh, policies by saying, well, if we want to preserve the heritage, maybe we need to uh, be able to offer a better welcome to those thousands of people who visit annually. Uh, and at the same time, uh, respect the the unique uh, characteristics of this uh, very 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 special small space. And so, that is what we're working on uh, currently. We're working on the environmental issues, and uh, we're trying to ensure that in the streets there are lots of uh, floral decoration, making it very pleasant to walk down. And uh, hand in hand with uh, UNESCO and the DECAR office in UNESCO, uh, we've been actually um, uh, modified certain of the public spaces and squares uh, to uh, uh, to improve the livability. Also, we're creating a uh, a touristy a tourist loop, which will in enable uh, visitors to discover all of the major monuments. Uh, uh, and so we've had experts from the Dakar office uh, in UNESCO, uh, so that we can incorporate all of these positive aspects into our preservation uh, plan. And. Uh, and uh, and also incorporate the cultural and uh, and uh, cultural diversity aspects uh, into our management plan there is also a plan to uh, look at the cultural events uh, uh, aspect of life we would like to highlight uh, uh, certain uh, aspects uh, historical aspects of uh, Goree's role in the history of the of the nation and so we want to focus both both on the history and also on the uh, cultural events uh, and promote our heritage so th these are some of the aspects that we have in our uh, management plan that I can mention that have taken their inspiration from the recommendation so we are undertaking uh, changes in public space, uh, and uh, also, as you uh, as you asked, it, it concerning uh, mobility in in the historic city, so that everything is in perfect harmony once we've finished. That's the plan. Thank you. Merci, merci book. Thank you, thank you very much. Thank you, Your Excellency. Thank you. We'll now move uh, to the to the film on uh, Guanajuato, uh, a message by uh, Mr. Alejandro Navarro, uh, the mayor of uh, Guanajuato in Mexico. Muy buen día, todas. 
Good afternoon. My name is Alejandro Navarro. I'm the mayor and uh, um, uh, and head of Mexico's uh, World Heritage Cities uh, National Association. Thanks for the invitation to take part in this commemorative event of the 10th uh, anniversary of the HUL recommendation of 2011. Guanajuato has a lot of uh, cultural wealth full of traditions, customs, flavors, colors, and folklore. And uh, it's a city full of uh, uh, happy spirit, um, and it was one of, and it's a major cultural destination uh, for our uh, for our visitors. Um, it, un it underwent a huge boom between the 16th and 18th centuries because of its mining activities. And uh, this can be seen in its buildings, be they private, religious museums, libraries, offices, schools, uh, which all together make up the outstanding universal value uh, that has been recognized uh, uh, by the uh, world heritage uh, uh, because the historic town of uh, of Guanajuato and its adjacent mines were inscribed on the uh, list in 1988. All of this ensemble of buildings and its mining tradition and vast history has uh, formed our identity in Guanajuato. And uh, therefore, in 2018, the municipality drafted its management plan and set up its management unit to oversee the city's uh, heritage. And uh, this became operational in 2020, and the unit's uh, Guanajuato Historical Center Management Plan became effective. Um, it, uh, it issues uh, guidelines concerning the uh, historic center of the town, and uh, it also connects government entities. Uh, and we ran a competition, which thousands of young people took part, called Redesign Your City. In other words, to dream up your ideal city. Thank you very much, and greetings from Guanajuato to one and all. Thank you very much. Um, I want to thank all the panelists uh, from the previous panel. Thank you very much for sharing your insights uh, and your uh, experiences, the policies and the actions you're taking in your city. It's very informative, very rich uh, for us uh, uh, and enriches the discussion. Thank you very much. And thank you for being with us today to celebrate the 10th anniversary. Um, we will now move to uh, the to to we've been listening so far to the views and the experiences of uh, mayors who've been taking various actions in cities. Uh, we want to turn now to some experts uh, to see from their perspective what they see as um, the role of urban heritage in making cities better from their perspective. And, uh, you know, it's also a way where the mayors who've been working very locally on one city, um, although we're looking at a number of different cities, and then we can see a global perspective from these experts who have been working uh, uh, on a range of different issues in different cities uh, around the world. So it is our great pleasure to, um, to be able to bring uh, here today and to have with us today, uh, Mr. Vishan Chakrabarti, uh, the William W. Worcester Dean uh, from the College of Environmental Design at uh, the University of California in Berkeley. Um, Mr. Chakrabarti, are you here online with us? Okay, great, uh, excellent. I am. A warm welcome. And then we have Ms. Kobe Brandt, Deputy Secretary General of, and Regional Director of ICLI, Africa. A warm welcome to you, Madam. Mr. Uh, and Ms. Firdus uh, Usidon, who is a Special Advisor to UCLG, uh, Secretary General. Warm welcome to you, Madam. And then um, we have Dr. Uh, Ludenbacher, Dr. Jörg Ludenbacher, Director of Science and Innovation Department, Chief Scientist of the World Meteorological Organization. A warm welcome to you. So we will, I would just go around the panel to, uh, to ask you um, 
what you see as uh, the way that urban heritage could contribute to making cities better, especially in the current uh, environment when we are rethinking what uh, you know how we should be thinking about cities. So at this moment, uh, how what role do you see for urban heritage going forward? So let's begin with uh, with you, uh, Mr. Chakravarti. Uh, uh, we're very delighted to have you with us. So uh, please, the floor is yours. Thank you very much. It is such a pleasure to be here. It's an honor to be invited and be amongst all of you. And also congratulations on the 10th anniversary of the whole recommendations. Uh, I think about this question in the following manner. Uh, the United Nations has already um, revised its population estimate for the planet for 2100 to 11.3 billion people. And I kind of start with this fundamental question of how 11 billion people can inhabit this planet in harmony with its resources and in harmony with one another, with a sense of equity and ecology and economy. And cities, of course, are a vital part of that response because we know that most of humanity lives in urbanized areas today. Uh, we know that 70% of humanity will live in cities by 2050. Uh, and that uh, much of this urbanization is happening in the global south, and that much of this urbanization is unfortunately taking the form of autocentric growth, non-sustainable growth. So what does heritage planning and heritage landscapes and historic landscapes have to do with that question? I believe it should actually be centered in this conversation about growth when we talk about circular economies and we talk about more equitable growth. And in part, I believe that because without the conservation of our historic landscapes, our growth becomes what we've already seen in rapidly growing areas, particularly in Asia and Latin America, where the growth becomes anonymous, it feels without culture, and we often feel in some of our growing cities that we go to places that could be identical to any other place we go. Uh, and I think that is a cultural threat. And we talk about environmental threats, but what I mean by cultural threat is I think for people and cultures around the planet, if they lose the sense of their heritage, the sense of their identity, then I think we risk a, a, a great backlash from that. Uh, and we're already seeing pieces of that in national in, uh, elections and so forth and uh, the kind of turmoil we're seeing around the globe. And so as an architect, and so this is my bias, and as an urbanist, I believe that physical form matters and that actually one cannot have growth without conservation. Uh, and so I don't think, this I think for too long has been uh, a binary conversation that we either have conservation or growth. I, I, don't, I don't think that that is a healthy way to look at this. I think we know that we need a certain amount of growth. The adaptive reuse of buildings in conservation areas could not be more important today, particularly coming out of this pandemic. Um, and because the ways in which we work and so forth are changing, our commutation patterns will change, our transportation infrastructure needs to change to really reflect that. And so I think heritage planning, I think, falls squarely within kind of this larger frame of how do we reconceptualize human settlement in 2100 or by 2100, again, so that we all can live equitably, ecologically, and with um, an economy that works for all. So uh, I will close with that, but thank you very much for the opportunity to comment. Thank you. Thank you very much for that inspiring vision. Um, we will now turn to Ms. Uh, Kobe Bram, Deputy Secretary General of UCL of uh, ICLE in Africa. Madam, the floor is yours. Thank you so much. Thank you, Jyoti. And firstly, let me just say what an honor it is for ICLE, Local Governments for Sustainability, to be here with you to celebrate this fantastic occasion. Ten years. 
And let's look ahead at the next 10 years. And we're so keen to work with you, UNESCO, and all our sister city networks in taking hands, in making sure that that implementation happens that you were speaking about in the opening statements. So we're looking forward to, to a very, very close partnership uh, into the next 10 years. Thank you very much. Uh, Vishan, you said it all, really. Um, I, I completely agree with the points and sentiments that you raised. And not repeating what you're saying, but building on from that. I think, you know, coming from Africa, and you were speaking about the Global South, the phenomenal growth that's happening in cities in the Global South, heritage tomorrow is what we build today as well. So I think it's important to also look at the phenomenon of informality. And that is something that possibly doesn't necessarily, you know, sit uh, normally within a discussion about heritage. But informality is a growing phenomenon um, in parts of the world, and it's there to stay. And within informality comes culture, and there comes vibrancy, and there comes a lot of rich um, new technologies, rich innovations, sometimes out of sheer need and desperation. But let's make room for that in the heritage discussion as well. And I think in a lot of in a lot of this growth that we see in, in urbanism, I mean, uh, the, the, our future is urban, let's face it. In, a lot of this growth also has the potential now, uh, also in the wake of COVID-19, to be built differently, to be built better, and to be built with the heritage of our future generations in mind. We have such rich culture and beautiful heritage that we're already celebrating in so many parts of the world. And a lot of that has been forgotten and buried. And especially coming back again to Africa, we've got fantastic kingdoms, fantastic cities that flourished centuries ago, and we actually have forgotten about the beauty of them. Let's bring that to the fore. But I'd like to focus just a little bit on nature. And I'm so pleased that part of the heritage conversation is also our spiritual and our physical and our mental and our community link with nature and the natural environment all around us. And what COVID-19 showed us is that we do not need a long time to change. We are changing most rapidly now since I can ever imagine humanity has changed before. And so we can actually do that. We can affect rapid change. And and the UN Secretary General told us at the end of last year, his State of the Planet Address, that the defining, the defining um, action for humanity is to restore our relationship with nature. And only during COVID-19, when we are deprived from nature, when we are locked up and not able to touch and feel and be in nature, do we really understand how much we miss it and how much that is part of who we are and part of our inherent well-being? So we, when we're talking about nurturing cities, when we're talking about the future sustainable city with the well-being and health of our communities, um, treasuring our heritage, we cannot do that without putting nature very much in the central place there. And things like biophilic design and these type of as aspects are exciting ways that we can take these cities forward. And I want to just close by um, addressing all the honorable mayors and, and city leaders that are here with us today. Please, let's bring nature fairly and squarely into the discussion when we talk about heritage, heritage that we have now and the heritage that we're creating for our children and the generations to come. Thank you very much and congratulations. It's an honor for ICLI to be here with you. Thank you very much. And thank you also, especially for pointing out the linkages between culture and nature, which we very much value. As you know, it's the world's uh, cultural and natural heritage and the historic urban landscape approach, of course, integrates, uh, looks at the integration of urban, of built heritage, natural heritage and local communities. Um, and over now to uh, Ms. Firdos Usidam, Special Advisor to UCLG. Secretary General. Madam, the floor is yours. Thank you, Chair. Thank you for inviting UCLG and so glad to, to join this uh, fantastic panel and this fantastic se session to congratulate you and thank you for the work done uh, by UNESCO on the Hill. 
I have been following up this work very closely uh, during the last eight years, and it has been great to see all the implications and derived uh, studies that these guidelines have been inspiring and fostering. I have been able to be of testimony on how cities were receiving these guidelines as I was working as advisor for mayors at that time. I was also able to see how academies were taking these EU guidelines opportunity to develop different scenarios in the development of the cities from an economic point of view and in the future trends uh, of the cities as well. As a professor, especially with uh, Professor Luis, uh, Luigi Fusco Girard. Uh, I was also able to see how civil society did receive these guidelines as being a major hit for the support of the local work done in cities for the restoration, preservation, and the future projection on, of the tangible heritage. However, where I felt that these guidelines were most rewarding and, 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 and uh, bringing a feeling of security is in the development of the cities that are intermediary cities. Indeed, these cities have the fear of uncontrolled development, marginalized extensions, and losing the feeling of belonging their own, of their own DNA that makes the city a unique piece in the middle of all the cities. And I think that Visham did, did uh, uh, picture it very well. Uh, avoiding losing the citizens, their creativity with the brain drain effect, while avo avoiding as well at the same time a development that would lose the identity of the city and its strength is one of the biggest challenges of intermediary cities. Local heritage, tangi tangible or intangible, is the driver, the motor for the self-recognition in the city. It is a matter of peace and rest into the cities. It is a matter of belonging to the place, and this is a key uh, uh, piece for the cities. And these di different dimensions are taken up by, by the Hewl. Uh, it is not only about one building, it is about capturing the DNA of the city, capturing the strength and the complete integrated and comprehensive identity of cities. And this is very important for the future. And today in these complex times of COVID and social and economic crisis, it does play a role in thinking and projecting recovery that takes, the, 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 that takes from the past the better it can to build a future. Maybe not building back the future, but be building forward uh, the recovery. So the EU have been key in the past, but have a strong implication into the, this new world coming in the post-COVID, uh, into the needed transformation that the cities, especially intermediary cities, have to go through towards more technology, more development, more resilience and ecological environment. And this can't be done without the cultural local component. Intermediary cities have received a big migration during the COVID lockdowns, and it is still going on today, and they will be receiving from the expert estimations 60% uh, of the future urbanization uh, of the future population in the cities, especially in the south of the world. They are known as places of well-being and have been investing in this brand to enhance the reality of the city in its rural urban linkages in its people and interconnections between nature and urban. It is part of their culture. So development is always welcome, of course, and especially in the frame of the global agenda, the 2030, the climate and, and the resilience agenda. But it must keep the restfulness that intermediary cities are known for. They are the linkage that we from UCLG are betting on today to develop a better relationship with nature. And my colleague and friend Kobe did frame it very well, more respectful through its cultural dimension, but for a more resilient post-COVID world. We are really betting on, on these cities to build the global resilience with the cultural component, joining the environmental and cultural criteria together into the citizens as being the human capital that will allow that to happen. Because at the heart of the future development, we are bringing the future generations right for a healthy, livable planet. And these guidelines are offering a way out to keep the identity, the self-recognition, taking the best of the past, the right luggage to travel safely into the future. Thank you. Thank you.
Thank you very much. Uh, this has been, uh, uh, you know, these are very rich uh, analysis uh, and, and the view of how we move forward and gives us a lot to chew on and work on. Uh, thank you very much for these, uh, these insights. And of course, as you have been pointing out, nature is very important, uh, you know, relating nature and culture, and you talked about resilience. So of course, we must turn to uh, to our leader at the uh, at the World Meteorological Institute, uh, Dr. Luta Baka, to hear more about what this means for the future in terms of cities uh, and heritage. So the floor is yours. Thank you very much, Yoti. And uh, in the name of the World Meteorological Organization, I would like to congratulate to the 10th anniversary of the UNESCO Historic Urban Landscape Recommendation. I would like to thank for all the great work and the achievements so far and the very interesting panel discussion we'll live today. The World Meteorological Organization has addressed the increasing demands of services in urban areas to improve their resilience to environmental, weather, climate, and water-related hazards. The newly established study group on integrated urban services contributes towards reducing risks of hydrometeorological hazards for urban areas. Some important topics include the future urban planning, saving historical heritage elements, and building new green heritage in small cities. In addition, uh, the United for Smart Sustainable Cities is a UN initiative coordinated by ITU, UN ECE, and UNI, uh, UN Habitat, and supported by many organizations and institutions, including UNESCO, UNEP, UNCCC and WMO to achieve sustainable development goal 11 that makes cities and human settlements inclusive, safe, resilient and sustain sustainability, sustainable. And the United for Smart Sustainable Cities serves as the global platform for advocate for public policy and to encourage the use of information and communication technologies to facilitate the transition to smart, sustainable cities. In this initiative, the smart city is also including safeguard the world's cultural and natural heritage. Finally, as mentioned by you, Yoti, I would like to mention also the newly established GEO Urban Heritage Climate Observatory Community Activity, which is led by UNESCO World Heritage Center and the Greek GEO office with almost 100 partners from more than 20 countries, as well as 11 international organizations. It aims to serve as a forum connecting Earth observations, climate change, and urban heritage in line with policy frameworks and incorporating a holistic and multidisciplinary approach to minimize fragmentation and enhance urban resilience. Thus, as highlighted by you, uh, Yoti, in the introduction, we have many important pieces of international collaboration, initiatives, programs, and study groups in a holistic way and uh, in international uh, collaboration that all address the importance and the role of urban heritage for sustainable urban development. We believe it's now time uh, to unify efforts, complement each other, and use synergies with today's HUL call for action and breaking down the recommendation into the three concrete actions in order to promote the HUL implementation for cities. Therefore, the World Meteorological Organization supports the implementation of the historic urban landscape recommendation and the endorsement of the HUL call for action. And we're very much looking forward to collaborate with all of you in the future. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you very much for these uh, very rich and uh, thought-provoking comments. Well, we've had a, a really uh, excellent uh, set of uh, comments, discussions, views, uh, experiences that we have listened to in this very short time. And first of all, I want to thank all of you for being so very cooperative with our very, very tight time frame. But that has enabled us to get this incredibly rich perspective very global perspective. So we heard from very local actions to talking about Earth observation uh, and the use of, of uh, 
uh, of satellite technology and, and, and so on to, to be able to understand the impacts and to address them. And we've talked about uh, intangible heritage, we've talked about uh, uh, nature and how to bring nature back into cities. So the, the range of, of ways to take forward uh, what has been done so far uh, has, has been really tremendous and, and very important, especially as you've pointed out in this current moment. Um, before uh, this panel leaves, if I may request everybody to turn on uh, your cameras for one minute so we could take a quick photograph of everybody, uh, group's photo, that would be absolutely terrific. And then um, I would like, uh, if we can invite absolutely everybody to turn on your cameras. Please. Ah, that's wonderful. I see that our director of the World Heritage Center, Dr. Mechtel Rosler, is also with us. That's wonderful. Thank you so much for joining. All right. Well, uh, I think that uh, with that, uh, I hope some one of our, our colleagues has taken that, uh, taken the pictures. Um, thank you. Now, I just want to to thank not only the um, the, the uh, interventions from the mayors uh, and uh, the city leaders and from the, uh, the very, very insightful uh, uh, interventions and, and analysis from the experts, but also the partners who have very kindly supported uh, the, our work and contributed to and collaborated with us in the development of this, uh, this set of events. It's actually two days of, of major events. So, Please do join us again tomorrow, uh, the city of Querétaro. Uh, I'm just going to name our partners and, and we're very pleased uh, to have had a chance to collaborate with all of them. The city of Querétaro, Mexico, who was also with us today. The mayor was with us just a few minutes earlier. Uh, the secretary, the secretaria de Cultura de uh, Gobierno del Estado de Puebla, Mexico. Uh, Regional World Heritage Institute, Zacatecas, of Mexico, the Austrian Federal Ministry for Arts, Culture, Civil Service and Sport, the city of Graz in Austria, the city of Salzburg in Austria, Historic England, UK, the Association of Italian World Heritage Properties, the city of San Gimignano, Italy, the city of Nanjing in China, uh, the UNESCO Regional Bureau for Science and Culture in Europe and the UNESCO National Office uh, to Mexico. But don't leave yet because we still have with us some amazing uh, 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 messages, films uh, from different cities. So I just want to, to uh, now turn to and I thank you again to all the partners and all the speakers. And I want now to uh, to to uh, bring up the video message of the deputy mayor for the um, the heritage history of Paris uh, and relations with religions, Ms. Karen Taim. Unfortunately, the message from the deputy mayor cannot be interpreted. The sound quality does not permit. Unfortunately, the sound quality does not permit interpretation, but the deputy mayor is delighted to participate and uh, is talking about the reconquest or reclaiming of the banks of the Seine River for citizen use. Uh, 
cette, cette reconquête des berges saines est éminemment environnementale. Thank you, thank you very much. Uh, and now we have the video message from Cordoba in Spain from the mayor, Mr. Jose uh, Maria Bellido. Es un honor y un placer poder participar. It's an honor and a pleasure to join you to celebrate the 10th anniversary of the recommendation, the HAL recommendation from UNESCO. Uh, it's, um, I'm very pleased to be doing this as the mayor of Cordoba because we have four declarations of world heritage in our city, which is the fruit of our past, uh, which is a past of many different civilizations, of a dialogue between cultures, of an exchange of knowledge, which has left uh, Cordoba with a real uh, treasure trust of, uh, of historical and uh, cultural heritage. We also, we're, we, those of us who live in Cordoba, Cordoba are very, very pleased as well to be uh, able to look after this, this this heritage. We believe that we have uh, we've got to value and guard this legacy. We have, do, and we're doing this with an by set, with a concerted effort. Um, with uh, an advisory panel on the historic old town and a planning department specialised in this. We believe that the old town has got to be a lively part of the city, that it has got to continue developing and to be alive. We have, uh, for example, a very important fiesta, the fiesta of the, of the patios, which uh, is a courtyard opening days, which is, which is part of our way of life and has been developed over centuries and years. An unusual fact also of the situation that we're in in Cordoba is that we are the source of the, the river, the Guadalquivir, which is part of the Declaration of World Heritage and integrated fully into to the hull. That's excellent. Now, before, uh, since we uh, all the panelists were so very disciplined and spoke within a short time, we actually have a little bit of time for some exchange. Uh, so if anybody has, maybe we could take uh, three or four questions uh, addressed more generally, because we don't know which of the panelists are still with us, if some of the mayors from the first panel are still with us. Um, so if you could, um, uh, and certainly we can see that uh, the the experts from the last panel are still with us. So please, uh, if you have any questions, uh, please write them in the chat uh, uh, and we will uh, pick them up from there. Thank you very much. Uh, please do put in your questions or raise your hand. I don't know if the hand function works for all the attendees in this, but my colleagues will pick up from the chat if you put in questions in the chat. We see a very some very nice comments in the chat. Uh, people are thanking us. Um, no questions yet. Would any of the mayors or uh, the experts like to ask any questions or make any further comments? Yes, please. Um, please, from Queretaro, well. From Carthage. Oh, is there somebody else? Queretaro. 
is the mayor of Carthage also raising your, are you raising your hand madam oui. ah, okay uh, please. yes okay maybe if if uh, uh, since Kerataro raised their hand first if it's okay with you I will I give you the floor right after Kerataro please go ahead Kerataro no problem thank you Gracias. Thank you. Thank you. And hello again. My name is Joel Primer, and uh, I'm one of the managers uh, of the uh, historic sites of Querétaro. Uh, uh, and uh, unfortunately, our mayor has had to uh, withdraw for today, but he sends uh, his uh, greetings. There are a lot of uh, issues to address, and uh, one of the questions that we have uh, is uh, how to continue with this mandate and continue applying these kinds of initiatives um, uh, so that we can continue to raise awareness as to the kinds of issues we're facing, to share success stories that, that can be uh, replicated in, in our cities uh, with this holistic approach uh, that we've been discussing of the HUL but also so as to better understand the different working instruments uh, such as uh, municipal management plans uh, and the different um uh, the different initiatives uh, that can be rolled out within our legislative frameworks. Um, currently, we are improving uh, daily the issue of resilience, the issue of uh, planning and the environment, citizen participation. These are all very, very important uh, aspects that we want to include in our plans. Uh, and we're also very interested in indicators for our management systems. So when we understand uh, uh, in our units and services, uh, um, which indicators are, uh, are showing that we're making the progress in the right areas. We have seen that uh, in the Western Hemisphere, such as in, in Africa, Asia, um, in Europe, uh, there has been a lot of participation. But in the Americas, or in our case in particular, in Latin America and the Caribbean, we uh, have uh, a lot to share, a lot to contribute, uh, a lot to to share with you, and we would like to uh, participate in future forums. And we do hope that in the future we'll have a chance to to participate further. So. Th I wanted, just wanted to thank the World Heritage Centre and Jyoti again for giving us this opportunity for taking this initiative. And I hope that we can uh, uh, see each other in, in future events very soon. We would be delighted to take part and to share with you uh, all of our accumulated knowledge and um, and and uh, and ideas. We're interested in the ideas from other ideas that we can put into practice in our own case. Thank you and congratulations. Thank you very much for those comments. Uh, thank you very much. I will now. I don't think that there was an address to any specific person, but I think the points about how we take it forward, uh, I think those have to be reflected on absolutely. And that's what uh, the call for action is about. Uh, so I will uh, just invite you to join the call for action as you have. Uh, and now pass the floor to uh, the, uh, your, your Excellency, the Mayor of uh, Carthage, Dr. Hayat Bayid. Merci, monsieur. Thank you very much. Um, thank you. I just wanted to thank all of the uh, uh, heritage team and uh, I wanted to thank the experts for their participation. We're delighted to be able to continue working with them on Carthage uh, and uh, working on uh, sharing uh, our knowledge and also Mr. Moili's presentation on the on the 21st. Well, again, looking forward to furthering that work. Uh, delighted to, to be involved in uh, rolling out this recommendation and uh, and hopefully it will be able to resolve some of the issues that Qatar is facing, particularly as concerns a heritage that is not actually uh, perfectly dovetailing with uh, with human uh, lifestyles and livability. And so that is why uh, we are 
uh, we're happy to say we've started the work, but now it's it's important to continue with uh, with the expertise that you can contribute to, to us, and we want to keep improving, keep moving forward, uh, and uh, build upon this concept uh, of. Uh, of uh, integrating uh, the the monumental aspects into the life of our citizens um, and vice versa. So thank you very much. Thank you uh, again and congratulations on the way that you've conducted uh, uh, the work here today. And thank you very again for organizing this event. Thank you. Thank you very much for those words. Je vais passer la parole. Now I should like to hand over to the mayor of Abome. You have the floor. Uh, what micro? Your microphone, Lord Mayor. Oui, c'est bon. Yes, can you hear me now? Yes, please proceed. So, as a mayor of the city of Abome, I wanted to extend my thanks to you yet again. Thank you very, very much to you, uh, dear moderator, and also my thanks to all my colleagues, the mayors from around the world. Abome is uh, delighted to have uh, been able to take part uh, in this event, celebrating the 10th anniversary of the HUL recommendation. And uh, we extend a huge thank you to the entire team for, uh, for this uh, recommendations anniversary event. And just a, a little nudge. Uh, a little reference uh, to the sister city of Abame here in France uh, and the work that is being to uh, to enable uh, our city to be inscribed on the World Heritage List. Once again, thank you to all the participants, uh, thank you to the organizers, and see you again soon. Merci, merci beaucoup. Thank you, thank you very much. I see that there is a question in the chat, uh, and it's quite a long and interesting question. So I'm just going to call on the um, on the uh, on the on the individual, uh, Mr. Moyud Hani. If you would like to please take, uh, I, uh, well, actually, I don't know if the microphone can be opened. So perhaps uh, I should try to read the the question. Je viens de dire. I have uh, just discovered, to my delight, this uh, all of these uh, entities uh, that are cooperating with UNESCO to safeguard the natural and cultural uh, heritage of UNESCO. Is it possible to extend this to other uh, organizations um, that represent uh, all of the entities uh, that uh, uh, would normally be involved in resolving all of these kinds of uh, issues, such as environment, livability, and resilience uh, for World Heritage Sites? Thank you very much. Question, um, but in fact, uh, UNESCO is an intergovernmental organization that is looking to to uh, support uh, all the member states in the implementation of, uh, uh, of precisely such an instrument, which is the whole recommendation uh, that brings together the natural environment, culture, and urbanism uh in in one uh, specific instrument i think that the points that have been raised by many of the speakers around how this could be done better to look at good practices or innovative practices look at indicators to see how this could be um measured or understood to see how people are performing 
these are important points that we need to, to work on and, and further refine the tools going forward. And certainly the whole recommendation is an instrument that is useful for World Heritage Sites, uh, but also for all historic uh, places, not only for World Heritage Sites, uh, but for all, all places with heritage uh, to, to be able to integrate and enrich uh, the places with heritage. Um, with that, I think uh, we are coming to a close. I don't know if there's anybody else here who would like to take uh, the, the, would like to raise any other questions or comments. Any last comments from anybody here? Okay, well, I want to thank you all again very much and move now to our closing video. Please do join us tomorrow for our, uh, the whole implementation in the, uh, historic urban, uh, the historic urban landscape application of the historic urban landscape recommendation uh, in World Heritage Cities. And do sign up uh, for, uh, to, to, for the call for action uh, and, uh, and stay with us to join us for the activities of the World Heritage Cities program and uh, and a variety of other activities related to cities uh, that we will be very glad to keep you involved in. We have now a video from the state of Puebla in Mexico, uh, the Secretary for Culture for the state of Puebla, uh, who is uh, addressing us and is also uh, been a partner uh, for this uh, for the development of this event. Thank you very much. To be able to take part in this forum uh, of the UNESCO World Heritage Center with its focus on historic urban landscape is a source of pride and responsibility for my city. We have uh, uh, 6.9 square kilometers of historical monuments with 391 city blocks encompassing 2,619 historical buildings uh, built in the 16th century, 17th, 18th, 19th, and 20th centuries. Uh, we have a dynamic nature in the historical center with the preservation of, uh, historic, uh, of a history is decisive for the cultural significance of its identity. De Puebla ha dado luz verde a una ambiciosa propuesta, la regeneración urbana planteando un plan de manejo para el rescate del área fundacional de los barrios antiguos de San Francisco, de Analco, del ex Homo, de La Luz, Puebla Patrimonio Cultural de la Humanidad. Dentro del plan se promueve la planificación urbana integral que permitirá dar respuesta a las necesidades mediante acciones de planificación como rehabilitación, regeneración y reintegración a corto, mediano y largo plazo. Se han generado proyectos integrales, así como sus lineamientos de ejecución enfocados al mejoramiento del entorno social y físico de la zona, a partir de la conservación de sus características históricas y a fin de preservar y poner en alto su patrimonio cultural, material e inmaterial, incentivando a la mejora en las condiciones de vida para las actuales y futuras generaciones de vida. Thank you very much and hope to see you tomorrow. Thank you again for joining us. All the best. Goodbye. Bye-bye, Jyoti. See you tomorrow. Bye-bye.